Outside the harbor are houses with bright red tiled roofs close together, where the people of BAC Fong City live. What? No clue. Suddenly there was a loud shout. The shout came from a spacious, splendid, beautifully decorated room. Sitting on a red velvet armchair with gold trim was a man dressed in a noble outfit, a blue-faced sheepskin cloak. He had short hair, a neatly braided long beard, a stubbled mustache, and a plump figure. In his hand was a model of a ship, he seemed to be the lord of Beifong City. In front of the table in front of him was a man in military uniform, one hand placed on his chest, he was reporting sincerely to the noble lord. His subordinates doubted, did the bandits who attacked Beifong City really exist? They seemed to have disappeared into thin air, not a trace could be seen. The nobleman was not sure if he was really interested in the information this man was saying, but his hand was still holding the model boat. He thought, could it really be just a hoax? But what if it was true? These treasures of mine. Hoo 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 hoo, I can't bear to let go of these treasures. He lifted the floating boat in his hand, then brought it close to his face, caressing it, his expression full of tears and sorrow. This foolish-looking person was the lord of Beifong City, Tafakoki. Then suddenly he broke down and cried like a three-year-old child. Hoo 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 hoo, making the other man stunned. However, while crying, he ordered his subordinates. Continue to investigate, until the harvest is over, do not let down your guard. While talking, he waved his hands, but did not forget to hug the boat, his appearance was very funny. Lord City, don't be in a hurry. Tori led the way, leading Lu Fong and Nina into Lord Tafakoki's room. Lord Father, this is the Lord of Xiang City, Lu Fong. Tori introduced, Lu Fong did not hesitate to go straight to the point. We have an intelligence that can help the Lord solve the problem. Then the three of them, the father and son of the North Wind City Lord and the West Young City Lord, sat down at the table. Lu Fong placed the secret letter on the table. The face of the Lord of Beifong City at that time was filled with joy, as happy as a rich man enjoying a good harvest. Could there be news of the robbers inside? As he spoke, he leaned forward and reached for the secret letter. Lu Fong extended his hand towards Tafakoki and said. No need to worry. Our intelligence was also hard to obtain. You see. As he spoke, Lu Fong waved two fingers in front of the Tafakoki city lord, meaning that nothing in this world is free. Of course, to obtain important information, one must exchange it with material things, or something the other party needs. I wonder if this fat and silly city lord understood Lu Feng's intention, but he still smiled with his eyes squinted and said. Yes, yes, sir, look at me, I'm confused. Two gold coins. Deal. Lu Fong must have laughed so hard that he tried to hold back his laughter. A secret letter that could change the fate of a dynasty was exchanged for two gold coins. The Lord of Xiang City shook his head, waved his finger, and said. Oh, no, no. Tafakoki shouted. Twenty gold coins. No, Lu Fong was decisive, stating his request clearly. Two large ships. The father and son city lords of BAC Fong City were stunned when they heard this. They both jumped up and said in unison. What? What? Big boat? Both of them couldn't believe their ears. At this moment, Lu Fong raised his teacup, took a sip, and slowly spoke. He had long heard that Beifong City was famous for using ships for trade. Coincidentally, our Eleven Yang City had just built a new port. Therefore, he left the sentence unfinished. Lord Tafakoki frantically waved his hands. Baron Lu Fong, you are making things difficult for us. Ships are the economic foundation of our Beifong City. No, no, absolutely no. Tori raised her hands above her head, crossing her arms in protest. Um, um, absolutely not. So what if we say, this intelligence includes a detailed plan, what day the robbers will attack, where they will attack from, and how they will attack? Putting his hand on the secret book, Lu Feng said solemnly. This. Tafakoki's voice faltered, he was thinking in his head. If it is true, then we can completely destroy the bandits. Completely free ourselves from their threat. Later, military funds can be used to develop the boat service. The Lord of North Wind City turned to his son Tori, wanting to ask. But he firmly shook his head. Then suddenly he said. Okay, I will give you a boat. But it can only be a medium-sized boat. His voice was full of regret. Then I want five. Lu Feng offered a price. Four. The Lord of Beifong City spoke again. Deal. Just waiting for that, Lu Feng had already sealed the deal with Beifong City. Now we know that in addition to being a playboy and a womanizer, Lu Feng is also proficient in martial arts, good at medicine, and also a diplomat. He is considered worthy of the position of Lord of the City. After the Beifong City Lord agreed to give four medium-sized ships to Xiang City, he felt like throwing salt in the wound. He was still suspicious. 
I was so happy, was I framed in the end? Tori stood by the side, feeling that this sounded familiar, he thought to himself. Why does everything seem so familiar? Well, the last time he went to Xiang City, it was like this, but Lu Feng had several hundred goats and several hundred horses from Tori. Here, Lu Feng delivered the secret letter of Home Elite Ma City to the Lord of Beifeng City. What? The Lord of Beifeng City shouted. He clenched the secret letter in his hand, trembling with anger. The bandits were all disguised as Lord Homa's knights. And there were more than 500 of them. His voice became more and more broken, without any courage left. This time. We. Are dead for sure. Both Tori and his father collapsed after reading the secret letter. Their anger suddenly turned to fear and discouragement, and they hugged each other and cried. Homa had the knights disguise themselves as bandits. That proves they didn't want to reveal their identities. We devised a plan to kill all those knights. Who would have discovered it? Lu Feng smiled calmly and gave advice to the lord of Beifeng City. But unexpectedly, Tori and his father did not agree, shaking their heads. No way. No way. Tafakoki cried. Even if all the troops of Beifeng City were summoned, they would not be able to resist Homa's 500 knights. Then add us to Xiang City. I will put on a show for the city lord. Lu Feng said with a smile. Tori and his father were crying. Hearing Lu Feng say that, they suddenly froze. They didn't expect there to be such a good city lord. On the outskirts of Beifeng City, the Xiang City army was performing. One by one, they lined up. They raised their bows and aimed. The command was given. They shot arrows. Arrows simultaneously shot through the air. A stab straight through the middle, through the target plate. The Lord of Beifeng was extremely surprised. He asked Lu Feng. What, what kind of bow is this? It can shoot so far. Moreover, its power is very strong. Tori's eyes widened in admiration. Wow, as expected of Baron Lu Feng. The performance isn't over yet. Please continue watching. As soon as Lu Feng finished speaking, a group of soldiers in armor ran over and replaced the wooden tablets. Lu Feng shouted loudly. Get ready. The archers raised their bows and began to aim at the armored men. Arrows were fired. After the shout of the Lord of the Western City, the arrows flew out. Witnessing the power of the Western City army with his own eyes, Tafakoki secretly rejoiced. Just now, such a powerful bow and arrow could not penetrate this armor. If this were on the battlefield, he would be happy just thinking about it. Tori standing next to him turned to ask Lu Feng. Baron Lu Feng. I wonder how many knights there are in Xiang City. Lu Feng smiled faintly. Wipe out the Homa knights. No problem. Tori and his father looked at each other in surprise at the strong assertion of the Lord of Taeduong City, then hugged each other happily as if they had found gold. Great, our treasure is saved. Thank you very much, Baron Lu Feng. If Beifeng City is captured, Homa's strength will greatly increase. At that time, the entire West will be annexed. Eleven Yang City will not be able to escape either. Helping Beifeng City is also helping himself. Lu Feng is truly a farsighted person. Taking the initiative to help Beifeng City is also an opportunity to destroy the enemy. Two against one, either blind or lame. Lu Feng's words and actions deeply moved Tori and his father. The two of them ran to hug Lu Feng, much to Mina's surprise and bored expression. At the newly built harbor of the western city, the water is clear with waves crashing onto the shore. Four medium-sized ships from Beifeng City for Lu Feng have gathered at the port. Lu Feng stepped down from the boat. Two beautiful girls came out to welcome him. Nicole was polite and respectful. Young master, you're back. Ellie standing next to him just snorted. Sorry for making everyone worry. Lu Feng replied. Uncle Nyo Ben came out to welcome the city lord. He said happily. That's great, there are four medium-sized ships. We can form our own trading team. Uncle Nyo, summon everyone immediately. Prepare to fight. Lu Feng excitedly gave the order. Clearly, this battle was not just a battle for Beifeng City. It seemed that Lu Feng had been preparing for this battle for a long time. Back to the castle, the air outside was extremely fresh and cool. Inside the study, Lu Feng gathered everyone and spoke. Xiang City and Beifeng City have formed an alliance to join forces to deal with Homa's bandits. Eli, Buff, two people in charge of logistics. Prepare weapons, also, form a healing team. Nyoda, Nyoer, Nyosan, you guys strengthen the soldiers' training. When necessary, conduct drills. Ngunga, you are in charge of communicating with the people of BAC Fong City to investigate the terrain of BAC Fong City. 
Whether or not we can successfully deal with Homa's bandits this time depends on everyone. Everyone shouted loudly in unison. Yes, Lu Feng turned to Uncle Nyo to discuss. Uncle Nyo often said that knowing yourself and knowing your enemy will bring you a hundred victories out of a hundred battles. We need to investigate the strength of Homa's cavalry. At this time, the beast man via standing outside the room heard Lu Feng talking about Homa. Homa, she continued to stand and listen. Listen to Uncle Nyo again. This, the great war is about to begin, I'm afraid there won't be time to investigate. The best way is to find someone from the western city who knows someone from Homa and listen in. For example, Via. Speaking up to here, Lu Feng interrupted. No way. Can't find Via. Via heard that and clenched her fist. She thought he didn't believe her. Her hands fell down, Via felt sad. Via, she just escaped from Lima City. I don't want to bring up those painful memories of hers. Via suddenly heard Lu Feng say. This time, the girl felt extremely surprised. He is worried, worried about me. Why? Obviously, I just arrived not long ago. Moreover, I am a beast man. Via clenched her fist, accidentally touching the door of the room. Hearing the noise, Uncle Nyo Ban shouted loudly. Who? Who is outside? Via panicked. Then she opened the door and walked in. Hesitantly, it was me. Before Lu Feng and Uncle Nyo Ban could say anything, the girl spoke boldly. I agree. I can help people. There was a bit of a surprise with the beast girl. Lu Feng was silent for a moment. His eyes looked determined and then he suddenly spoke. Good. The intelligence side will leave it to you. That Homa guy is very cruel and evil. Bad mood is killing people indiscriminately. It is said that he also brought knights to hunt the villagers of the place he managed to train his soldiers. But Homa, he is very impulsive, easily angered, dealing with him is not difficult. Many people hate him to the bone. Via was sitting and recalling the years in Leapma Citadel with the extremely cruel and vicious city lord. But beside him was the kingdom's knight sent by his father. Grey. Lu Feng asked the kingdom knight in surprise. Via closed her eyes and recalled the painful memories. During a Homa battle raging in the village. The poor people had to hide behind the bushes. Isn't he the lord, shouldn't he be protecting us? Why is he attacking us? We're going to die anyway, let's take a chance with them. The people were driven to the brink of extinction, they had nothing left to lose and were too indignant at the lord's arrogance and cruelty. They risked their lives together, joining forces to kill the lord. Die, Homa. With that, they charged forward together. However, Homa didn't need to take action this time, the king's knight was there to protect him. He drew his sword and slashed through the civilians, in the blink of an eye, all of them were dead. Whoever dared to injure him, he would kill without mercy. There is an announcement, Lord Homa, there is news from Beifeng City, Xiang City Lufeng, three days ago arrived at Beifeng City. Homa's subordinates reported urgently. Homa read the letter and smirked. Ha, killing my merchants, stealing my currency, and spreading false information to deceive me. Lu Feng, the one who really oversaw. He clenched the letter tightly, suppressing his anger, but inside he was filled with extreme indignation. He ordered his subordinates. Return to the city and carry out the plan soon. We must eliminate this commoner. In short, they are all demons. Via hugged Mina and cried. Lu Feng felt sorry for the pitiful girl, remembering the painful memories and crying. He wanted to comfort her a little. He spoke up. Via. Lu Feng held out his hand. But Lu Feng's obsession still did not disappear. The girl closed her eyes tightly, her mouth cried out. A triple A. Don't worry, we will protect you. Lu Feng replied, reaching up to stroke the beast girl's head. She smiled and said, thank you. Mina, Lu Feng looked at Mina and asked. Have you ever fought with the kingdom's knights? Mina shook her head. Not yet. She continued. But whoever it was. If you dare to hurt the young master, I will definitely kill him. Mina declared strongly in front of Lu Feng. Nyo Ben and Vaya were extremely surprised. A girl with a beautiful, slender, and fragile appearance but had the courage of a warrior. Truly admirable. Lu Feng was touched by Mina's sincerity. He could only call out. Mina, young master. The couple looked at each other passionately again. Quite surprised by this development, the girl via thought to herself. It seemed like she had discovered some secret. As for Uncle Nyoban, he was like a 10000V light bulb at this moment. You beasts, hurry up. Whoever dares to be lazy, don't blame me for being heartless. 
The soldier holding the whip shouted loudly, urging the beastmen to carry, chop, and saw the wood quickly. Everyone is working very hard. Sneeze? Surely that's not the big sister scolding me. It's Dees, carrying a log on her shoulder and rubbing her nose. Hurry up, don't be lazy. The soldier was shouting and pointing his whip at Dees and shouted. Come here, come here, do you know this log is very heavy? Dees calmly replied. Suddenly a girl with a small tail. While holding a bundle of wood in his arms, he slipped and fell. The soldier shouted, Hey, you, can't you see where you're going? Get out of here. The soldier said as he swung his whip and kicked the poor girl. The girl could only hold her head and endure the beating. Hearing the noise, the beastmen working nearby turned to look, causing the soldier to scream again. What are you looking at? It's just a bunch of lowly beastmen. So what if I kill it? He was arrogant, suddenly, bang, on the black guard's face, there were wounds. Little girl, are you okay? Dees asked the guard, accidentally but intentionally hitting the guard in the face with a piece of wood. His face pale, the soldier stood up and shouted loudly. Stinky slave. Oh, don't let him finish. Dees rubbed his nose and spoke. Oh, sorry. I didn't see you. The angry soldier shouted. What? She did it on purpose. I must kill you. He approached the girl aggressively. Just then, his companion shouted. What are you doing over there? Hurry up and prepare. Lord Homa will be leaving in two days. The soldier was afraid of slowing down the group, so he turned around and left, not forgetting to threaten. Ha, huh, consider yourself lucky. As he walked, he shouted at the beastmen he met on the way. What are you looking at? Get to work. Dees looked at him and sneered. Humph, I'm not afraid of people. Dees reached out to help the little girl. Be careful next time. She said, then patted the little girl's head. Humanity does not put us in its eyes. Are we going to be like this forever? The little girl looked up at Dees and asked worriedly. What is there to be afraid of? As long as you don't give up, there will be a chance to escape. With a determined gaze, Dees replied with an iron determination. Two days later, the Lima army raised their flags and prepared to go to war. The flags fluttered in the wind. The army in shiny armor lined up in rows, waiting for the orders of the Lord of Lima City. Homa rode a horse, wearing a mask, appearing with a permanent cold expression. He shouted, Departure, Target, North Wind City. Outside the western city, Lu Feng's voice calling for martial law rang out clearly and firmly. Those bandits robbed our food, killed our loved ones, and made it impossible for us to live. It's time for us to counterattack, brave warriors take up your swords. Raise them, protect your loved ones, and fight to the end. The soldiers standing below shouted in unison. Fight to the end, fight to the end. Lu Feng gave the order. The entire army set off. The target was Beifong City. At the Beifong City Lord's Mansion, Tafa Koki was overjoyed to see Lu Feng arrive. Baron Lu Feng, you're here. Lu Feng and Mina slowly walked in. I have ordered the soldiers to lie in ambush outside the bar, make sure Homa comes and never returns. Ha, ah, Baron Lu Feng's work is really reassuring. The father and son lords of BAC Fong City rushed to hug Lu Feng, happy like children. The two sides were hugging each other passionately when the guards from outside ran in to report. Not good, young master. A large number of pirates have been discovered in the south of BAC Fong City. Looks like homeless people. What? How is that possible? Their intelligence arrived three days earlier? Lu Feng was surprised, while the Tory father and son were extremely panicked. Could it be that the news of our alliance was leaked? The Lord of Xiang City guessed. So, then what should we do now? If there is no way to deal with it, won't we die for sure? The Lord of Beifong City said anxiously. Lu Feng replied with a thoughtful expression. Homa wanted to use the name of bandits to destroy BAC Fong City. Then he wanted to use his noble status to take BAC Fong City into his hands. But I will let him know, he cannot even approach the city gate. At this moment, the facial muscles of the Tory father and son gradually relaxed. The sound of horse hooves stopped in front of the city gate, BAC Fong City. A loud scream rang out. Kill, whoever breaks the city gate will be rewarded. The army is numerous as ants began to charge. Suddenly arrows from all over the sky rained down like a shower. The pirates' men and horses were hit by arrows and fell to the ground like weeds. They cried out in pain. Team 2, fire arrows. Lu Feng shouted the command. With that, another rain of arrows fell. Homa and his subordinates stood from afar watching. This Lu Feng really came prepared. But so what? Pass on my orders for those beastmen to come up. 
Homa ordered his subordinates. Clearly, Homa's subordinate gave a sinister smile. Lord Homa has given orders. I will give you a chance to make a great achievement. Quickly go and attack the city gate. If you succeed, you will be greatly rewarded. Homa's subordinates came to give orders to the beastmen. They heard and started talking excitedly. D stood in the crowd and thought to himself. Who would believe that we are beastmen and not idiots? The leader of Homa's subordinates continued to ask. Why not seize such a good opportunity? Then I will help you. With that, the commander slashed a beastman's neck with his sword, killing him instantly. The remaining beastmen were extremely surprised by his barbaric actions. He continued to shout loudly. All beastmen, charge forward for me. Whoever retreats, I will kill without mercy. Then the soldiers holding swords pressed close to the beastmen, forcing them to charge. Ah ah ah. Don't. The screams were deafening. Standing on the wall directing his army. Lu Feng suddenly heard the sound of running footsteps and smoke and dust billowing up from below. He warned the soldiers. The second wave was coming, and it was coming fast. Everyone get ready. Lu Feng raised his hand and gave the command. Launch the arrow. Thousands of arrows flew down from above the city wall and pierced the poor beastmen who were forced to rush towards the city gate. Homa's subordinates saw this and laughed loudly. Ha 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 ha, that's how it is, let those lowly beastmen go first. He muttered to himself. Well, what is there to the kingdom's knights, what is so great about them? As long as I can take Beifong City, the first credit will be mine, and I will also have a place in the future. He secretly calculated. Just like his city lord, his heart was just as vicious. Among the beastmen who had to charge towards the city gate, only Dees dodged the arrow. She also wiped her nose to show danger. The game is easy. Suddenly she heard a loud shout. What are you doing? Let me go. Let me go. It was a weasel girl with a striped tail. Another beast man was holding her up high, covering her face to use as a shield. He said, sorry I don't want to die. When people are pushed to the limit, there is nothing they won't do. At this point it's hard to talk about humanity. An arrow from above was about to pierce her back. Bam! Deesa's footsteps rushed forward, pushing the other two down. She shouted, what are you doing? The little girl ran over and hugged Deesa tightly. The beast man stuttered, I don't want to die, I don't want to. Before he could finish his sentence, an arrow shot straight into his chest. Remember, even beast men cannot be trusted. Deese said to the little girl. On the city wall, Lu Feng was preparing a new series of arrows to destroy the pirates. Cat girl Mina looked down intently below the castle. Suddenly she discovered something unusual. Running hurriedly below were beast men. They had long ears, horns, and tails. Mina screamed. Wait, young master, those are not robbers. Those, those are beastmen. Mina's voice was like a thunderbolt. Both Uncle Nyo Ben and Lu Feng turned to look at Mina with shocked expressions. What did she say? Lu Feng asked the girl again to make sure what he had just heard. They used the beastmen as shields again. He said, his teeth clenched together, his eyes blazing with anger. Lu Feng's entire body trembled with anger. He didn't expect them to be so cunning. Catch, the door opened. The knights of Taeduong City rushed out. The first man with hair shaped like a young tree rode out on horseback, shouting loudly. Heeding Baron Lu Feng's orders, he fought to the death with those bandits. The cavalry advanced, their horses galloping with great momentum. Ha, ah, the knights are out. They must be out of arrows. The man in the black cloak laughed with satisfaction. He shouted loudly. Let the beastmen charge forward, and execute the people around them. Homa's knights rode their horses and forced the beastmen to run towards the city gate. So Lu Feng's knights just came out. The knights saw a large crowd of people running towards them and stopped their horses. The guy with hair like a tree with two leaves shouted loudly. Oh no, our formation is broken. Taking advantage of the opportunity when Lu Feng's knight formation was destroyed by the beastmen, the bald man in the black cloak, Homa's knight, charged forward, his shining blade aimed at the knight with tree-shaped hair. Kung, his spear broke in two. He screamed again. Kill them all. A group of Homa's bandits charge. Kill. The sound of galloping horses' hooves rumbled, and rocks and dirt underfoot rose up in a cloud of smoke. The sound of swords clashing. They fought for a while. Lu Feng's knight was the one with the tree-shaped hair on his head who was stopped by the bandit boss. The spear in his hand cracked during the first fight. So he broke it in half. It made a cracking sound. Then he shouted loudly. Can't fight back. Withdraw. 
The black cloaked knight who was wearing a black cloak and a hood over his head, Homo laughed happily and shouted. Ha ha ha. The knights of the western ocean city are just like that. Lu Feng's head is mine. Then Homa's entire cavalry pursued Lu Feng's army into the city. Just took the first steps inside the city. The horse suddenly stopped. In front of the bandits was a group of beastmen that had gathered. A row of Lu Feng's knights stood in front to protect them. Lu Feng's cavalry raised their bows. Aim straight at the enemy bug. Prepare to launch. Lu Feng ordered. Close the door. Fire the arrow. Arrows rained down on the bandits. The leading robber died first. All lying scattered at the foot of the wall. They fell for Lu Feng's trick when the knights pretended to lose the battle. The beastmen saw the bandits dead and were all scared. Trembling. All. All dead. What to do? It's not our turn, is it? Clang. What is that smell? It smells so good. The soldiers carried out a large pot of porridge. The aroma wafted out, making the orcs extremely curious. At this moment, Lu Feng and Mina appeared. He smiled and said loudly to the beastmen. Don't worry. We won't harm you. You can eat the porridge here. After you finish eating, you can go. If you want to stay, you can stay. You are free. What? Nobles are that nice? But it smells so good. They wondered. Maybe because they had never been treated kindly by a noble. So it was hard to believe that such a nice noble would appear. While they were still on guard. The ox-like Dees heard that there was food and rushed forward. She was carrying her little weasel sister with the striped tail in her arms. Her eyes lit up. She was eager. Leave him alone. Eating well is the most important thing. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Dees and the little girl ate greedily, as delicious as they had never eaten before. Making the remaining beastmen drool with desire. Unable to bear the hunger, they shouted, I want to eat too, I want to eat too, wait for me too. Then they all rushed forward. Towards the place where the porridge was. Standing there watching everyone eat their fill, Lu Feng and Mina felt really happy. Everything seemed to be going smoothly. Suddenly there was a loud scream. Lord Lu Feng. A man galloped in to report. Gate. The gate of Beifeng City has been breached. Homa's men are advancing towards the capital of Beifeng City City Lord. Lu Feng's eyes widened. He was shocked by the news he had just received. In B.A.C. Fong City, the sound of horses' hooves plowed the ground. The people in the city hurriedly ran away. Run away quickly. Homa's cavalry is charging forward, preparing to annex Beifeng City. Homa said triumphantly. That commoner Lu Feng definitely didn't expect it. Those beastmen were just bait. Ha 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 ha. Go. Go forward with all your might. He pointed at the capital of the Beifeng City Lord and gave the order. Just use the name of the bandits to kill the Beifeng City Lord. Then Beifeng City will belong to me, Baron Homa. Homa's scheme was planned out in advance. He is truly a vicious person. It seems I underestimated this Homa. After hearing the news, Lu Feng immediately gathered his soldiers and prepared to give orders. Please give your orders, young master. Clenched fist. A determined gaze. Lu Feng ordered the cavalry. Summon the elite forces. Use the fastest speed to reach the city lord's mansion. Protect the city lord. Lu Feng's order resounded like thunder. The entire army put all their efforts into carrying out the mission. From the balcony of the Beifeng city lord's mansion, the Tory father and son watched as an army rumbled towards them from afar. The lord of Beifeng city said, that, that is. The bandits of the Homa gang. How did they get in here? Quick. Close the door. Don't let them break in. The lord of Tafakoki panicked. He shouted. The door was quickly closed. But it was too late. Two guards were killed. Homa gave the order. Charge. Take the head of the lord of Beifong City. Suddenly. A rain of arrows came from behind. Arrows pierced the chest, the head, the body of the robber and his horse. The horses fell. The robbers fell. They died in front of the gate of the city lord's mansion. Tori and her father were so happy that they cried tears of joy. It was Lu Feng. Lu Feng and Mina were leading the elite cavalry charging at terrifying speed. Lu Feng. Come save us quickly. Mina swung her knife. Ending the lives of the bandits she passed. Lu Feng's face was filled with murderous intent. Sharp blade swing. Shining. 
slashing like lightning, sweeping through the bandits. Suddenly, feeling danger behind, he raised his sword to block. Lu Feng punched the man who tried to stab him. He fell from his horse to the ground. Wolf Squad! Charge! A knight of the wolf squad shouted loudly. There is an ambush. Everyone be careful. The robbers shouted. They were ambushed by Lu Feng's armored army. The brave warriors in armor charged at the robbers. Some were sent flying. Some were thrown high into the air. How dangerous! Wow! Baron Lu Feng is so awesome! Tori exclaimed with admiration. But! The Lord of Beifeng City hesitated. Homa's army kept coming, bigger and stronger. He spoke. He was Lu Feng. Indeed, seeing is believing. He curled his lips and smiled arrogantly. Lu Feng looked straight into Homa's eyes with determination. He spoke loudly. You bandits! Breaking into the Baron's territory. You deserve to die. If it weren't for Lu Feng today, the bandits would truly be able to act freely. Homa looked at Lu Feng with contempt and thought to himself. Ha ha! What a Lu Feng, wanting to destroy these bandits of mine. He smirked. What a pity. You came too quickly. You only brought a few elites. Even if we fight ten against one, we can still destroy you. All up. Homa shouted. He smiled wickedly. Kill. The two armies charged at each other. The battle was fierce. At the main gate of Beifong City. The pots of porridge had been cleaned out. There was nothing left even in the bowls. The group of beastmen who had eaten their fill were sitting on the ground, breathing heavily. Bowls of porridge were piled high. Some people were still eating. An old man with two black horns on his head. He was holding a bowl of porridge. The old man spoke. This lord of the western ocean city seemed to have gotten into a fight with Homa. A man with longer ears and purple hair also spoke. The other city lord only brought 50, 60 people. Homa has more than 400 people, can they win? Let's get out of here, the old man said to the beastmen. If Homa takes over Beifong city, we will fall into Homa's hands again. It seems the old man has a point. The beastmen gradually left Beifong city. The little girl with the striped tail watched everyone leave and said to the purple-haired beast girl. Little brother, everyone has left. At this moment, Dees was still concentrating on finishing a few more bowls of porridge. Lu Feng's armored corps was overwhelmed by Homa's cavalry. The wolf warrior army was too small in number so they also shed blood. At this moment on the battlefield, the balance of power between Homa and Lu Feng was clearly different. Mina approached Lu Feng and warned him. Young master, if this continues, he might not be able to hold on. Lu Feng did not reply. Perhaps Lu Feng already had the answer in his heart. Suddenly the city gate opened wide. The father and son lords of Beifong city rode in on horseback. He was spinning a thorny ball in his hand and shouting, Baron Lu Feng, I'm here to help you. Lu Feng's face was filled with joy, and he was secretly happy. Luckily, someone came to help. But then suddenly. Bang. Bang. The thorny hook betrayed its owner. I don't know how it hit the owner. The father and son of the BAC Fong Citadel turned around and ran away. Sorry. I can't do it. Running away before even entering the battle. They are really weak and like to show off. Hey. So weak. Lu Feng shouted loudly. Suddenly from over their people and horses flew up high. A strong wind blew. Lu Feng stood there, bewildered, not understanding what was happening. After eating and drinking, he had to move around a bit. Dees carried a large log on his back. Over here, the little weasel girl with the striped tail is cheering for Dees. Little brother, do your best. Homa's soldiers were sent flying by Dees. They were amazed by the power of the beast girl. One of them asked, where did that guy come from? Dees let out a snort. She lifted a large log in her hand. Spinning it in a circle created a whirlwind. Whoosh! She threw the wooden stick at the robbers. The weight of the tree is very large and it is flying at maximum speed. If it accidentally hits someone, they will be flattened like an ant. The bandits were knocked down and thrown far away. Taking advantage of the opportunity when no one was in the way, Lu Feng said to Mina. Good opportunity Nina follow me to capture the enemy must capture the general first. Saying that, the two rode off on horseback to chase Homa. Homa was a cold-blooded killer with a cold, murderous aura. But now he had to run away to find help. Catching up with him, Lu Feng and Mina swung their swords at Homa. 
Suddenly a tall, muscular man wearing a mask and cloak appeared from nowhere. He used his saber to block Lu Feng and Mina's swords and blades. He is the kingdom knight that Via spoke of. The one who always appears in Homa's battles makes him never lose. Lu Feng and Mina, both of them thought so. Young master, you go catch Homa, leave this place to me. Mina shouted loudly. Okay. You must be careful. Lu Feng replied, then whipped his horse and galloped after Homa. The kingdom knight rushed forward, brandishing his great sword, and struck Mina with his gun, but the agile girl used her two knives to block it. Mina looked at him with a determined gaze. She said firmly. Hey, your opponent is me. Facing an undefeated opponent, the cat girl was still steadfast, strong, and brave in her confrontation, not wavering at all. Perhaps the girl was also worried that Lu Feng was not his opponent. Over there, Homa rode his horse ahead of Lu Feng, joking as he ran. Ha ha ha, come and catch me. He was acting like he was playing tag while they were fighting. He smiled fiercely. While chasing Homa, suddenly a sharp sword was pointed at Lu Feng. Although surprised, with his special ability, Lu Feng still managed to lean back, dodge the sword tip and land gently. At this moment, Homa spoke up again. Ha, we nobles have been proficient in swordsmanship since we were young. Dealing with you is as easy as turning over our hands. He spoke in a tone filled with disdain. Oh, then let me see. Lu Feng calmly replied to him. Even when you're about to die, you're still stubborn. Homa said, his eyes flashing with anger. At this moment, he swung his sword and slashed continuously at Lu Feng. But Lu Feng's speed was also admirable. Homa dodged every strike he made. I can't hit it. Homa thought. What? How is that possible? Homa didn't believe in Lu Feng's ability. He was getting more and more angry. Then, without wasting any time, Lu Feng ran over and jumped. Homa fell to the ground. His mask flew off. Lu Feng walked up to Homa. He spoke loudly. I know you are Homa. You're done for today. After saying that, Lu Feng clenched his fingers into a fist and swung his arm straight towards Homa. Prepare to punch him. As quick as lightning, a sharp blade swept in an arc, cutting a clean cut on Lu Feng's clothes. Almost got hit by his knife. Just in time, kill him for me. Homa gave the order. The one who just missed Lu Feng was the Kingdom Knight. He turned back to protect Homa. Well, wait. Mina nodded. Not giving Lu Feng time to think, he charged forward and attacked Lu Feng from behind. But, once again, thanks to his special ability, Lu Feng avoided it. He took the sword in his hand. Quickly blocked. The two people's swords collided, sending out sparks of electricity. Lu Feng thought to himself. So fast. Then the two swordsmen fought back and forth with no clear winner. Suddenly he slashed, the knight's sword injured Lu Feng. A sweet cut on the cheek. His speed and technique are extremely formidable. Not to be underestimated. Speaking of inside the city, D single-handedly lifted a large wooden stick and hit the bandits. They ran in panic. Some of them couldn't run fast enough. They were hit by Dees and fell flat under the tree. Faced with Dees's extraordinary power, the bandits joined forces. They shouted in unison. Quickly subdue her. Dees watched the bandits continue to come. She was furious. They kept coming. They kept coming. This is so infuriating. The fierce scream made the power in Deesa's chest explode. Ripping off the outer layer of her shirt to reveal her body with full breasts. Plump. The bandits were extremely surprised when they saw it. They all had nosebleeds. The pressure in her body was released. Deese fought more easily. She said. Eh? Now she can use her full power. Deesa's strength now seemed to have doubled or tripled. She swung the wooden stick faster. Stronger. Sweeping away any enemies that appeared in front of her. Lu Feng was still using all his strength to fight the knight. His movements were quick and precise. Lu Feng thought to himself. Even though he knew his move in advance, he could only defend with all his might. The knight felt as if he had met a worthy opponent. He thought it was interesting. Interesting. There was actually someone in the west who could keep up with his speed. Suddenly Lu Feng stopped. He stood staring at his opponent. A large tree trunk was above the knight's head. The knight quickly dodged to the side. The tree trunk collapsed to the ground. Dees appeared. He he. Such a good fighter. How could I be absent? Lu Feng was surprised that the person who just appeared with extraordinary strength was a girl. What? She. She was a woman. 
and yet, to prove that she was not a weak woman. Dees kicked the tree trunk with her toes. She shouted loudly. Go! Pika the giant tree! Just by using the strength of his toes, Dees sent the giant tree flying high. Flying quickly towards the night. He jumped up. He dodged Dees's attack again. Then he continued to rush forward and swing his sword to fight Lu Feng. Well done! Dees shouted. With that, the beast girl clenched her fist. Strike the ground where she stood. The ground around her collapsed. Creating a spider web-like crater. The knight witnessed Deesa's strength and Lu Feng's extraordinary speed and agility and jumped high. He thought, this beast man could not continue to cope. He stood on the roof and shouted down. Who are you? Beast man. Dees. The beast girl replied. The lord of the western ocean. Lu Feng. The lord of the western ocean replied. The knight smirked. Ha ha. Interesting. No wonder he sent me to this remote west. Suddenly he raised his hand, removed his mask, and spoke loudly. Remember my face well. We will meet again one day. With that, the knight took a leap. He jumped into the air. Leaving Homa dumbfounded. Gray. What are you doing? Kill them quickly. You are the knight my father was sent to. You must obey my orders. Homa shouted. An order. If I didn't have to hide my identity, the first person I would kill would be you, that useless bastard. The Grey Knight replied. Homa saw that and his face was blank. Extremely confused. He hurried after him. Wait. Don't go. My father is Count Pulley. I am dead. He will not forgive you. Lufon watched the knight leave. He thought to himself. Who the hell is this Grey? Dee seemed disappointed that he couldn't continue fighting. He thought he could fight for 300 rounds? Homa backed away and muttered. Impossible. I am the son of Count Pulley. No one can hurt me. That's right. You lowly people. Before he could finish his sentence, he received two punches straight to the face from Lu Feng and Dees. He looks so pathetic now. Lu Feng said. That's right, Dees. Quickly capture him so those guys stop. Okay. Dees obeyed. Lu Feng at this moment secretly hoped in his heart. Something must not happen. Mina. The war ended. Xi'an City and Beifeng City formed an alliance to defeat the Lima City army. Laughter echoed throughout the castle. Ha 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 ha. Beer down. Victory. The soldiers laughed loudly. They clinked glasses together to celebrate the victory. Wine and meat were spread out on all the tables. The soldiers put their arms around each other. They drank happily. There's wine. There's meat. This is great. The beast man Dees was feasting beside the little weasel girl with the striped tail. Dees didn't notice that her two huge grapefruits were being looked at longingly by the men. Tori and his father raised their glasses and said. I thought I was dead for sure this time. The two of them cheered again. Baron Lu Feng. So handsome. Inside the living room of the Beifeng city lord, Lu Feng, Ellie, and Buff stood around the bed. Mina was lying there. She had been unconscious for half a day. Lu Feng looked at Mina attentively, worried about the little cat girl. Suddenly Mina slowly opened her eyes. Lu Feng happily called Mina's name. Ellie was happy to see Mina wake up. You've been in a coma for half a day and were worried to death, Ellie said. Ellie. Mina spoke softly. Mina saw Lu Feng sitting next to her, so she tried to sit up and said. That's right. Young master. Are you okay? Perhaps due to the unequal battle with the kingdom's knights, Mina was injured. Her weak voice was still filled with pain. Don't move. There are many serious injuries on her body. If not for the young master's surgery. Ellie stopped talking. The air fell into silence. Hands drooped. Face sad. Mina blamed herself. Sorry. I'm too weak. Even a knight of the kingdom couldn't fight back. Nonsense. How can you be weak? Mina is the strongest beast man in our tribe. Ellie spoke to comfort Mina. Lu Feng looked at Mina worriedly. Then he suddenly ran back and hugged the cat girl. He held her in his warm arms. Whispered. Silly. You did great. Then the sweet kiss probably happened right in front of Ellie and Buff. Ellie was surprised. Her heart was filled with surprise. The young master kissed Mina. 
and Buff stood there wishing he were young again. He thought. It's good to be young. While Lu Feng and Mina were still feeling awkward, suddenly the door opened. The father and son lords of Beifeng City, along with everyone else, happily rushed in. Each of them had a cup of wine in their hands. Baron Lu Feng. Everyone has been waiting for you for a long time. How could this banquet be without the great hero Lu Feng? Go, go, ha 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 ha. Everyone shouted in unison and pushed Lu Feng out of the living room. Mina tried to smile. You guys go. I'm fine. Ha 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 ha. Baron Lu Feng. I will drink five large barrels with you. The loud laughter still echoed behind the door. Mina kept blaming herself. I'm too weak. It was night time. The victory celebration in the castle was still going on very lively. People ate, drank, played music, sang. The atmosphere was bustling everywhere. You are Ngungu. Have you made up your mind yet? It's too late to regret now. Dees looked at his opponent who was about to compete. His eyes were determined. Ask him if he regrets it or not. Go ahead. He answered decisively. But in less than three seconds, Dees had pinned his hands down to the table. He couldn't move. His mouth opened wide. He was about to die. He was about to die. He was so bold just now. Why was he screaming now? The referee shouted loudly at this moment. Dees 17 consecutive wins. The soldier who had just wrestled Dees was added to the ranks of those who had broken their arms challenging Dees to an arm wrestling match. The beast girl stood up and shouted, anyone else wants to fight me? Anyone else? Ha 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 ha. Big sister is really good. The little girl cheered for Dees. Lord Lu Feng has arrived. It's Lord Lu Feng. The crowd cheered loudly. Lord Lu Feng. Lord Lu Feng is so handsome. Lord Lu Feng. All the soldiers and everyone present in the hall shouted, praised, and applauded the lord of Xiang City, Lu Feng. Entering the middle of the room, Lu Feng raised his hand to signal. Everyone waited silently for Lu Feng to speak. Gentlemen, this success is thanks to everyone's efforts. We have repelled the robbers. Protected our home. Here, I toast everyone. Everyone raised their glasses and shouted loudly. To Mr. Lu Feng. To Mr. Lu Feng. While everyone was having fun, Lu Feng waved his hand at old man Buff. Buff brought out a ceramic jar and held it up high. This was a specialty of Xiang City. Canned fish. Lord Lu Feng invited everyone to try canned fish. This was the first time he had heard of it. Tori felt strange and asked again. Everyone gathered around the box and talked excitedly. The lid of the box was opened. A scent wafted out. Is this canned fish? What a strange smell. What the hell is this? Everyone seemed curious. They gathered around. Wondering. Perhaps Beifong City had never tasted this dish before. The fish was brought out and placed on a plate. But no one dared to try it. Everyone was still skeptical. Wasn't this just a normal fish? Could it be eaten? Why did it look so strange? Faced with thousands of questions from everyone, Old Man Buff slowly said. This fish needs a certain amount of time. Tori asked curiously. This, Mr. Buff. How old is this fish? Buff immediately replied. Not long, about half a month. Tori shivered and hurriedly shouted. Half a month. Wasn't this fish dry for half a month? Is it still edible? Tori stood hesitantly in front of the fish dish. Even a glutton like Tori was worried about this dish. But in a flash, the plate of fish on the table disappeared. Dees quickly picked up the fish dish and ate it with relish. You guys really don't know how to enjoy it, the delicious food is right in front of you and you're still hesitating. Tori just stood there, dumbfounded. My fish. Tori saw Dees eating very deliciously, her taste buds were stimulated. It seems to be quite good. Tori thought greedily. Tori boldly shouted. Mr. Buff, give me a portion. Oh, you want to challenge your taste buds? Old Buff replied. Here, young man. Old Buff brought out another plate of delicious looking fish. Tori tasted a piece of fish, carefully put it in her mouth, then closed her eyes and slowly tasted it. Each piece of fish seemed to melt in her mouth, an indescribable taste. Even as a noble, Tori had never tasted it before. Tori's eyes suddenly widened in surprise at the fish dish she had just tasted. It was not just the usual delicious taste that made Tori exclaim. Delicious. The fish had been left for half a month, but the meat was still so fresh. It was soft, and with this dipping sauce. 
Sweet and sour, stimulates the taste buds. Makes me so happy. What is this sweet and sour taste? Unable to contain her curiosity, Tori asked. It's tomato juice. I added tomato juice. Lu Fong replied. The fish meat is rich and mixed with a rich, salty, and sweet tomato sauce. This type of fish has been specially processed. It can be preserved for up to half a year. It is a food preparation for the march. Don't be shy. Please try it. Lu Fong briefly introduces the quality and benefits of this fish dish. Everyone at the party was surprised at how long it could last. What? Half a year. That's amazing. Mr. Buff, give it to me. Give it to me too. Everyone wants to try this delicious fish from the Western Ocean. Old Man Buff had to wave his hand. One by one. Don't be in a hurry. It's so delicious. Why are you stealing it from me? It seems like Lu Feng's fish has stolen all the spotlight tonight. Saw Ellie sitting alone with her loot on her hands. She looked very worried. A soldier came over and asked. Big sister, why don't you go try some food? Ellie didn't answer. He continued calling. Big sister. Big sister. Ellie's eyes stared blankly into space. She didn't hear the call. Normally, when it came to food, no one could win Ellie back. But now she was indifferent to such delicious food. What a rare occasion. Big sister. He called out loudly again. Only then did Ellie suddenly wake up. But Ellie was angry with him. She shouted. Kid. You want to die. He could only mumble. Eat canned fish. Big sister. Ellie snorted and left. What's wrong, big sister? Aren't you going to eat? It's still Ellie. But today she's very strange. At this moment, a sound of eating was coming from behind the cabinet. A wagging tail was revealed. This is delicious. A fox-tailed beast man was eating it ravenously. Eating it non-stop. Delicious, right? They only stole so much. It was enough. The purple-haired girl with two horns looked like she was a Capricorn. Both of them were happy about the food they had just found. Suddenly, Lu Fong appeared out of nowhere. He coughed lightly, startling her. The little girl quickly hid the food to one side. What are you doing? What's wrong? She leaned to one side. Causing her two grapefruits to swing and hit Lu Feng's face. No no, I just wanted to ask how canned fish tastes. Who can stand this? His face turned red, shy, and embarrassed. It seemed like this beauty test was difficult for him. It's okay. But. Don't think that because of that I'll believe you humans. Her purple eyes were sparkling but also filled with vigilance. She had only helped him before for a bowl of porridge. Now the relationship had changed. From now on, we would not interfere with each other. She said as she pointed straight at Lu Feng's face. Oh, he replied innocently. Making her confused. Wanting to invite her to the western city to try some other delicious dishes, he turned around and started to talk sweetly about the food to entice her. Hitting the ticklish spot made her wake up and her eyes light up. She tried to ask him again. Delicious food. That's right. Peach egg tart. Cream egg tart. Meat loaf. Fruit egg tart. Cheese sandwich. Meat loaf sandwich. Chocolate chip cookie. Mango pudding. But that's it. Anyway, we won't be involved in the future. Listening to him talk about Te Duan Tan is no different from Belgium. China but all I hear is European food. Wait. She gaped as if she had just missed an opportunity to exchange food. Seducing a beauty is indeed a short way through the stomach. Lord Lu Fong stopped. Ha, huh, what are you guys doing? A group of people appeared from somewhere and kicked the girl aside. They pulled Lu Fong back. It startled him. This matter, we mainly want to learn about the canned fish of the Western Ocean. Or maybe Lord Lu Fong has some extra. He smiled with an interested expression, wanting to discuss it with Lu Fong. I'm really sorry. The technology of making canned fish is very complicated. The output is not high. That was all that was left. What, is it gone? Lu Feng's words seemed to stab straight into his heart. He collapsed because he had just missed something precious. He cried and lamented. What a pity. Lu Feng then winked at the young man behind him. The Westerners had a lot to play with besides the boxed stuff. There was a huge market inside. You could say that they had everything they wanted. Really? Everyone was excited. What an advertising stunt worthy of an international award. What? 
Big market. The man sitting there crying and whining. But hearing about big market made him dizzy. Lord Lu Fong. I wonder if we can come to your Xi'an city as guests. Of course, everyone is starting to pay attention to Xi'an city, which makes Lu Fong proud. This Tory looks quite good. This time, the Beifong city trade market is open. You are seizing the opportunity so that your country can expand and develop. At that time, please take care of Lord Lu Fong. After saying that, everyone started to move. Dad, this fish is really amazing. Why don't we go to Xi'an city and see it too? A little boy was trying the canned fish. He seemed interested. He wanted his dad to take him to the production site. It tastes really good. It seems Baron Lu Fong is quite interesting. His father is the kingdom's merchant, Sorrow. He seemed to gradually become fond of Lu Fong. In the moonlight of the lonely night. Hurried steps, revealing bushy leg hair like the Amazon rainforest. Damn it, this is so unlucky. Just arrived at this hundred wind city and encountered horse robbers. They didn't even dare go out in broad daylight. Now it's good. Everyone in the city has come to the castle to join the celebration. They just happened to seize this opportunity. The two of them ran like bandits and dashed across the street. The yellow-bearded man looked up. Found it. Over there. He pointed straight up to the roof. A white-haired girl was running away. White-haired elf, beautiful face like a beauty. Mysterious white eyes, long, smooth legs. She is an elf. Lelisa. The reward of 1,000 gold coins is mine. The bald man said as he threw a knife at her. She was on high alert and quickly jumped up. Just dodged the knife and at the same time picked up the bow and pointed it straight at him. Steady demeanor. The posture was no different from Cupid and Love pairing. Before the two men could react, two arrows were shot straight into their heads. Blood splattered everywhere. The two men screamed miserably and fell down. They did not know their own strength. She slowly landed while scolding the two idiots just now. Unable to stay in this city any longer, it seemed she was planning to leave for somewhere else. After the night sky filled with the smell of blood. The next morning, there was the sound of people's activities. Happening as usual. Quickly, raise the sails and prepare to depart. Yes, everyone raised the flags and prepared to depart. Baron Lu Fong. This time we leave, not knowing when we will meet again. Tori said goodbye to Lu Fong. Please wait. Wait until I, Tori, am capable of taking over the position of Lord. I will come to you to retire. He was moved and wiped away his tears. He kept saying goodbye. Um, Lu Fong also happily responded. Tori, he shouted at his son who was tiptoeing away with a large bag. He panicked and hurriedly ran onto the boat. Tell him, father, I am going to live in Taeduong City. Father, give birth to another son to inherit the position of city lord. This ungrateful son. Come back to me. He shouted at his only son. Yet he dared to leave him and go to another country to live. A son born to be useless. Calm down, calm down. Lu Feng gently eased the situation at this time. Baron Lu Feng. Someone called his name from afar. He gently turned his head and was startled. Thank you for saving us. A representative stood up. In front of a group of beastmen behind. He said thank you. And everyone bowed their heads in gratitude to their savior. The old man smiled with a kind and benevolent expression. It was them. Yesterday they finished their porridge and ran away. Now they have the nerve to come back. The two soldiers behind Lu Fong chattered. The two looked no different from the sharp-beaked Zico. And the fat Chan. Only then did Lu Feng's face darken. He snapped. Didn't I tell you? Finish your porridge. If you want to leave, then leave. If you want to stay, then stay. You're free. The beastmen were a bit shocked at this moment. Of course, you guys can also come to my western city. Whether you are human, beastman, or any other race, you are all equal. Lu Feng said as he pointed at the three other people. Just work and you can take care of it. Lu Feng said as he extended his hand. Creating intimacy. Inviting everyone to his country. Really? Really? The beastmen started to stir. Everyone was crying tears of joy. They hugged each other and laughed happily. Thank you. It was like a new horizon had opened up for them. Hope had come to them again. Your city lord is also kind. The purple-haired girl gradually lost her dislike for Lu Feng. Of course. Our young master. The blonde girl took the opportunity to flatter her city lord again. Hey, why are you guys here too? 
Lu Feng's provocative, curious gaze looked towards the two of them. Make them startled and shyly look at him. It seemed like everything was going his way. Lu Feng smiled smugly. Satisfied. Go. They started moving the boats. Heading towards the west city. Let's go. Go home. Lu Feng ordered everyone to go forward. In the west city, people are harvesting rice. Harvesting batches of ripe, golden rice. Ah, the farmers. Startled, he looked towards the main road. Look over there. It's the city lord. The flags are fluttering. Lu Feng rode his horse steadily. His demeanor was determined as if he was bringing victory to the villagers. The city lord is back. Let's quickly inform everyone. Only then did the villagers start to bustle and spread the news. Everyone has arrived at the west gate of the city. The cheers and joy of everyone welcoming the city lord shows a prosperous and happy country. I heard that the city lord has destroyed all the horse riding bandits. The city lord is really amazing. Everyone looked towards Lu Feng and cheered for his achievements. Old man, son, daughter. The city lord has avenged everyone. From now on, there will be no more horseback robbers. There will be no more horseback robbers. Grandma and granddaughter looked at each other happily. Long live the city lord. Her grandson also shouted out his praise. As if to express his gratitude for defending his family. Long live the city lord. Long live the city lord. And so everyone started to shout along. Everyone was happy. Everyone had family members who had been victims of robberies. All had been duly compensated. Nicole, Via, were back. Lu Feng led the purple-haired girl into his mansion. Young master, are you hurt? Nicole hurriedly ran over to worry about Lu Feng. Are you hurt? No, it's fine. He was quite surprised by her special concern. Nicole kept touching him. Me, the girl also knows how to seize the opportunity. Causing Lu Feng to helplessly sigh. Via, do the new clothes fit? Yes, they do. Thank you, young master. Before, she was a dirty rabbit who was busy running away. But now that she has changed into a new set of clothes, her elegance has been revealed. Homa and his knights were sent to work in the coal mine. They will never come out again. This can be considered as taking revenge for your parents. Lu Feng informed her about her family's situation. Fortunately, they were safe. Thank you, sir. Thank you, young master. She excitedly thanked Lu Feng. She hugged his head tightly to her chest. His face was buried in her chest. No big deal, he smiled meanly. A lucky guy. Young master. All three little girls that he had raised before. All looked at him with angry eyes and shouted. Revealing jealousy and envy. Sorry, I didn't mean to. The startled rabbit let go of him. But it was too late. The nosebleed wouldn't stop. Almost forgot. Lu Feng scratched his head and walked out. Via, Nicole, I'll introduce you to some new friends who are beastmen. Being hugged by a girl makes you forget everything. Only then did he raise his hand towards the purple-haired girl and introduce her. Dees, the beastman, she just happened to be passing by and had some business. She crossed her arms, pushing up her plump, round bust. So big, her big and round soul made Via and Nicole gape in amazement. Nicole, what are you doing? Take her to change, the blonde girl ordered Nicole, yes. The whole room was in chaos. Big, so big, so tall. The house is so beautiful. The beastmen looked up at the tall, sky-piercing building in amazement. It seemed like they had never seen it before. She really didn't expect it. The houses in Taeduong City were bigger than any other city she had ever been to. When did the white-haired beauty get here? Even this surprised her. This is what the city lord prepared for those who want to work in the Western Ocean City. All the floors are rented rooms. The elder stood up and announced to everyone. What are rented rooms? The beastmen were all wondering about the human language. Seeing that they did not understand, the elder explained to them. Just pay monthly, called rent. Anyone can live here. The rent will depend on the size of the room. For example, this room is only enough for one person to stay in, and only costs 10 coins per month. As he spoke, he opened the room he was standing next to as an example. Unexpectedly, inside the room was a woman preparing to change clothes. The beastmen who looked in were all startled. The ant's face turned red with anger. The marks began to appear. Go die, you pervert. She rushed in and beat him up, using every object in the house to beat the old man. A lively sound rang out. 
After a while, she went into the room and slammed the door, leaving the old chief standing there in the yard. But he stubbornly continued. A room for two people costs 13 coins. There are also rooms for three or four people. He ran out of breath at this point and couldn't speak anymore. He was still able to introduce, so dedicated. The beastmen sympathized with him. Well then, I want a single room. The white-haired girl stood up to choose a room. Ah, uh, of course you can. As he spoke, he leaned on his cane and stood up, seemingly struggling. We also want to rent. But, but we don't have money. We, a few beastmen stood up and lamented our situation. It's okay. The city lord had anticipated this situation. If you don't have money, you can leave it there for now and pay later. Wait for everyone to join the work. Then deduct it from your salary. My personal suggestion is, everyone can rent together. Split the rent equally. It would be cheaper. The elder gave the idea to everyone. At this, the beastmen began to shed tears. The city lord is indeed a good person. Everyone began to be moved by Lu Feng's actions. Everyone was enthusiastically accepting the upcoming work. We will definitely work hard. Pay the city lord. Mr. Buff, you are also a good person. Although your character is a bit lacking. It was a misunderstanding. Everyone praised the city lord but did not forget to mention Mr. Buff. My lords, this is our street. In front is the big market. Nyoban will introduce his city to you. Let everyone have a chance to broaden their horizons. Looking at the planning and construction of this city, there is also the level of welcome from the city lord. This Lu Feng is not simple. Both father and son have been in the city for a long time. A lord seems to have been chased away by me. He ran away in a hurry. Guys, wait a minute, my stomach hurts. It's urgent. He ran out of the stall and headed to who knows where. Sir, wait. Xiang City won't allow it. Niu Ban said as he reached out to stop him but it was too late. Just like that, the lord ran away. He ran to an alley. Hurriedly pulled down his pants. And so. He was happy, comfortable, light and sublime. Before he could finish enjoying it, a dark shadow suddenly appeared in front of him, making his face contort. Didn't anyone teach him that he couldn't pee or poop anywhere? Out of nowhere, a few villagers came out with sticks, hoes, and shovels, standing in front of him to punish him. The guy started to turn pale. But, but doesn't everyone find a corner to relieve themselves? He started to make excuses for his shameful behavior. Everyone what? Just you. People shouted and cursed right in your face. They banged their hands on the board right above his head. Don't you see? It says here, defecation is prohibited. If you want to relieve yourself, go to a public restroom. I'll even show you the direction of the restroom. Isn't it over there? They just kept swearing right in his face. It made him pale with fear. But it's not far. The public restroom is right in front of you. There was also an old lady sitting in front of the door fanning herself. Separate restrooms for men and women. Just to pee and shit, why do you have to go to such a nice room? This lord has always peed everywhere. So in his eyes, the restroom is no different from a VIP room. You don't understand. The city lord said. Infectious diseases are spread by these dirty things. Gather these dirty things in one place to deal with them. There's no need to worry about infection. The people here explained to these nobles. They started to look at each other and discuss excitedly, what, toilet, infectious. They were talking more and more excitedly. The large room can also prevent infectious diseases. Go, go and see. People started rushing to the toilet. It was as crowded as a festival. Everyone was excited and curious. Wait for me. The Lord tried to escape but was held back by the people. Why are you running? Clean up your things in the toilet. Pay the fine too. If you defecate in public, you will be fined five dong. They are like hungry ghosts demanding a debt from you. You will also be fine. No, I didn't expect to be fine for peeing. What, don't want to give? His hesitation made the people even more threatened. Give, give. This regulation is so good, I'll pay it right away. After saying that, he quickly gave the money to the people. Hurry up, hurry up. The crowd of visitors began to enter the restroom marked as the women's restroom. Before I could remind everyone. The old man in the lead opened the door and walked in. Everyone wondered what was so magical about this bathroom. All the women in the bathroom shouted. Ah, lustful. Then everyone rushed to punch and beat whoever entered. They were all shooed out of the room. 
It must have been pretty rough. The old lady watching the toilet looked at them with an ugly expression. Poof. You guys don't care about face anymore. You can't even differentiate between men and women in the restroom. Look at the signs. This is the lady's room. This is the men's room. She pointed to the signs on the board. Men's restroom. Women's restroom. Symbol. Why didn't you say so earlier? The group of people who had just been punched were indignant. Okay, I see you guys are here for the first time. Need toilet paper? One dollar a piece. She handed everyone a handful of paper. And signaled for a discount. On purpose. Absolutely on purpose. But, paper, isn't it just leaves that are used for cleaning? The white-haired old man still tried to ask. To show her that he wasn't being fooled. Need or not? She still calmly asked again. With a face like, I'm tired of you guys. Then the crowd obediently gave her money. Need, need, need. Please give me one bill each. See, how humiliating. The toilet was clean and odorless. There was even toilet paper. I didn't expect using the toilet in Western City to be so enjoyable. Yes, yes. The crowd walked and were overwhelmed by the toilets here. Father, those papers are so comfortable. Let's buy more. We won't need to use leaves anymore. The child happily said to his father after using the soft papers. Okay, okay. He also quickly nodded to please his child. It smells so good. The scent kept wafting past his nose. There's food. Father, he called out to his father, pointing to the dumpling shop. The shop looked small, but there was a long line of people. That's our favorite dumpling shop. From what Neil Bond said, this must be the shop's family heirloom. It has been famous for a long time. If everyone is hungry, they can eat first. No need for him to remind me. Everyone was gone. So fragrant. What the hell are steamed buns? These nobles all ran towards the fragrant bakeries. They were like strange creatures who had just opened their eyes to a new world. Hey, the people were lining up so tightly that it seemed like they couldn't get through. But they all stepped aside. To let the nobles pass. The people here are really conscious. They proactively let us go. The guy who peed in public earlier thought the people were being enthusiastic about him. But the harsh reality was hard to accept. All the people were gossiping and criticizing them. They hadn't bathed for at least a month, right? Just like us. Yes, this stench was too hot. Let's go. Let's go, to the point where we lost all interest in eating dumplings. The gossip of the people made these nobles feel ashamed. The rusticity was surrounding them. Do we stink that much? The lords began to ask themselves. Old man, are you okay? Before anyone could reply, there was already living proof of that. Hang in there, we'll find a doctor for you. The people here are really clean and shiny. Even the thing they spit out sparkles like a rainbow. Or should we take a bath first? The father patted his son's head with concern. If you want to take a bath, we have a public bathhouse for the people of Xiang City. You can try it. Nyo Ben introduced them to something new. A bathhouse, they repeated Nyo Ben's words. So that's how it was. It turned out that the bathroom was in a large tub where people bathed together. Then everyone led each other to the large bathroom that looked like a swimming pool. Everyone slowly relaxed and took a bath. Suddenly, around the father, black water spread, both of them were startled. The son immediately jumped into the bathtub next to him and criticized his father. Father, you are so dirty, this brat. The son is really honest. If you hadn't run around in the water two days ago, you would be this dirty now. He was both embarrassed and ran to catch his son, so he could cover his mouth in time. Father, you made the water here dirty. Get out quickly, or I will get dirty like you. Ha ha ha, father, quickly let me go, then we can have fun in the bathtub together. Thank you, receptionist. Coming out of the public bath, everyone became shiny and glossy as if they had just transformed into a proud and sparkling person. It's been a long time since I've had such a comfortable bath. Yes, the father and son look alike and seem to get along well. Father, I like this place, why don't we stay here? It seems the modern convenience here has attracted this little guy. You fool, have you forgotten the purpose of our going out? The father reminded his son of the goal to sober him up. That's right, going out to find a suitable husband for his daughter, hearing his son say that, he was also stunned. Little girl, we are going out to find new opportunities, but if we can conveniently find a good person for your sister, that's fine too. The father quickly spoke up, to cover up his son's slip of the tongue just now. He couldn't let his daughter lose value in the eyes of everyone. 
Father, look, the child still ignored him and pointed ahead. Where is that place? The Western Market. The market gate is large and wide, with people coming and going busily. That was our Western City trading market. Nyo Ben introduced it to everyone, and everyone's eyes widened and their mouths opened in amazement at the splendor of the market. There were all kinds of products inside, everyone could look around as they liked. Nyoban quickly invited everyone to come in and take a look. Inside, there were familiar images, plenty of essential food, and shiny valuables that seemed to have not been purchased since it was first opened. This is top quality porcelain, this gentleman seems to be knowledgeable about porcelain. This price is too cheap, or bring it back to the north. Regardless of everyone's admiring and gossiping about the items, the white-haired lady still calmly ate her buns, not caring about those items. The city has too many delicious foods, by some daily necessities to stay for a while, the food here has attracted her, her face lightens up when she eats something she likes. Get out of the way, get out of the way. The nobles and the lords were gone, the common people had become poor and hungry, rushing to the counters. Ignoring everyone around them, the father and son almost dropped the porcelain vase. Hey, can't you see when you're walking? The girl shouted at the crowd who were shouting and fighting over each other's things, get out of the way. It's all mine, mine, mine. Both father and son were surprised by this greed. Don't fight with me, I came first so it's mine, don't be like that, I've offered a higher price than you, I, it's all mine. Call all your goods to me, I have the money, their fighting and cursing made the whole store chaotic. Sir, here, the accountant was confused and didn't know what to do about what was happening. Hey, you guys are going too far, the locals started to strongly protest, they pointed at those people and cursed. You guys bought everything, what are we going to buy? That's right, do you think having money means having everything? People just jumped in and cursed them. The two stood looking at each other for a while, then showed discontented, careless smiles, and a boastful tone arose. Sorry, with money you have everything, I'll double the price, can you guys compete, we'll not only come today, but tomorrow and in the future, ha ha. These guys not only had no shame, but also became more defiant and outrageous, making the people here more and more agitated. They were all angry but couldn't do anything. This lord, ha, a hand from somewhere touched his shoulder. Sorry, we are the guards at this market. The city lord's mansion has an order that each person can only buy within a certain limit. The things you bought just now have exceeded the limit. The three beastmen on guard duty, from young to old, held up the paper in front of the two greedy men and reminded them. What, by limit order, both of them stared at the paper. We will take back the items that exceed the limit and of course refund you. What if I want to buy everything? Another guy dropped a huge bag of items on the ground, all of them became panicked and embarrassed. Hope you guys can cooperate. If not, the sly laughter of the security guard appeared, making them sweat. Recall then recall, what's so great about it, the peeing guy still can't help but grumble. Ha, this time even with money it won't work. The people started to provoke them back, hateful, the greedy people started to leave, the humiliation stuck to them and wouldn't let go. What are you doing? You open a market but still limit the purchase amount. You can't buy in bulk. You don't have a chance to spend money. Don't be in a hurry, let's go find the city lord, as long as he knows how much profit we can bring him, the limit by order will be quickly cancelled, they will be proud of themselves again. Father, I want this, the kid happily held a huge lollipop and asked his father to buy it for him. Ha, ha the purchase limit order not only prevents prices from skyrocketing, but also ensures people's consumption. Interesting, the father seems to be very impressed with Lu Feng, he will probably invite him to be his son-in-law soon. On a bright moonlit night, everyone was chatting in the mansion, discussing quite animatedly. Nicole, haven't seen each other for a few days, have you researched this thing yet? No, no, Nicole was happy to hear Lu Feng praise the cake she made. Hee hee, the young master is praising me again. Lu Feng sat down and enjoyed the cake she had just made. Not only Lu Feng, but Nina was also eating very enthusiastically. Then all three girls' eyes lit up, because of the pizza on the table. Looks like she's about to become the number one chef in the West. Lu Feng was so happy that he flattered her, young master, don't joke with me, I'm still far behind, although he was very happy and pleased in his heart, he answered very modestly. Everyone was eating enthusiastically, only the two little girls were fighting over each other's food, don't touch my pizza. Don't you have any appetite? Let me eat, Dees, put your pizza down. I've been here for days, you two keep fighting over it. Dees shook Ellie's hand off and devoured the remaining piece of pizza. So delicious, what did you say, I couldn't hear. Her actions made Lu Feng burst out laughing. Via is quite shy. Clenched her fists, seeming to want to say something. Young master, she stammered, wanting to tell you something. I, I want to beg you for something. She bent down, her head hitting Lu Feng's head, making him spit out water. Young master, are you okay? 
She started to cry and apologize to Lu Feng again, for causing trouble without even asking. It's okay, it's okay, go ahead. Actually, my parents are the leaders of the rabbit tribe. Because of the guiding fire of the ice goddess, our family had no choice but to leave our homeland and head south. The image of the ice goddess covering the people fleeing their homeland, amidst the harsh, difficult and arduous snowstorms. On the way, my parents and I were accidentally captured by humans and sold into slavery. Via was locked in a wooden cage, her eyes filled with tears of pity, looking no different from the image of prisoners of the 1945 famine. The more she spoke, the more tears fell. They helped me escape from Lima City, she couldn't hold back her tears. Via. Ellie comforted her. Via raised her head to look at Lu Feng. My clansmen are definitely still in the jungle, waiting for us to return, young master. She bowed her head again, making Lu Feng fearfully move away. I want to take them to Taeduong City, because the young master belongs to our southern beastmen. Her words made Lu Feng suddenly awake, making everyone feel sympathetic, a strangely warm feeling. Dees was happy too. The road was quite far, if she turned back it would be very dangerous, Lu Feng stood up and walked towards her, this matter, Via hesitated and was confused. I will tell the wolf warrior squad to escort you back, so the road will be safe, Lu Feng winked and smiled, understanding what she meant. Lu Feng's enthusiasm made her eyes sparkle with happiness. She happily hugged him. Young master, stop, before you can touch him, the three girls all shouted to stop you. Nina, you're going too, the night sky covered the space. Everyone prepares to move into the forest. Yes young master, Nina wears a murderous kitten outfit. Also prepare to escort Via. The beastmen are very sensitive to humans nowadays. Just letting the wolf squad go might lead to misunderstandings. I used to live in the Yutin mountain range, so I'm very familiar with the place. Bringing Via back is also reasonable. She used her identity as a beastman to ensure that Via returned safely. But her wound had just healed, Lu Feng was worried about her, because she had not fully recovered yet and had already gone back to fighting. Because of my business, I need so many people to go, or should I go alone? Via was confused by everyone's enthusiasm. No, both of them turned to her and said it directly, as if to imply that it was impossible. She obediently listened. Yes, sorry. Mina and Lu Feng looked at each other with determined eyes. Okay, but you have to agree with me. No matter what happens, you have to come back safely. Mina smiled in agreement. Young master, rest assured, I am a cat warrior. This outfit seems to suit you very well. It exudes absolute security. Not to be underestimated, Lu Feng began to give her detailed and lengthy instructions. Be careful. Don't go around randomly. If something is too difficult, put it off for now. Make sure you wear warm clothes and don't get sick. Remember to brush your teeth and wash your face every day and pay attention to personal hygiene. If you get injured, bandage it immediately. After treating the wound, return immediately. At worst, go again. Don't rush to complete the mission. Safety is the most important. When it rains, remember to take shelter from the cold. You must eat three meals a day. Remember to heat up the food you eat outside. You cannot eat cold food, it may contain parasites. In case you get sick from a stomachache, you must bring digestive medicine. He talked so much that people exclaimed, why does the young master look like his mother? Mina stroked her hand over his face. Making him silent. The young master, as soon as she called his name, kissed him on the cheek. Making him jump. His body felt like it was on fire. He couldn't react in time. Via admired the two. Ellie was angry. She wanted to scratch but couldn't do anything. Then Mina turned around and led the horse away. Leaving Lu Feng standing there alone, stunned. Not yet able to recover. Young master, I am going. She rode straight ahead. Um. The hickey was still on his flushed cheek. Wait for me. Via hugged her horse tightly in fear. The guards behind followed. Mina take the lead. Young master. Wait for me to come back. Mina will definitely become stronger. I'm starting to like this way of thinking of Mina. Let's prepare to wait for her strength. A happy laugh broke out in the middle of the large room. He he he. Lu Feng probably hasn't been able to sleep since yesterday because of last night's kiss. Not yet time for him to dream anymore. Then from somewhere came a pile of paper taller than my head and hit the table. Young master. Time to take care of official business. Okay, okay. Take care of official business. Take care of official business. He hastily took it. Didn't knock. Didn't know when he entered. Ellie looked at him, making him speechless. Ellie, do you have anything else? 
Nothing. I don't want to help the young master think of a solution. She angrily turned around and walked away. Even though she wanted to help, she was still angry about yesterday. Lu Feng also sighed helplessly. There are so many things, I still can't finish reading them all even if I don't do it all tonight. I really hope to have a smart and talented secretary to help me. Ellie pricked up her ears. She turned around and boasted. If that's the case, I'll help you, young master. You have to thank me. She patted her chest and praised herself. I know. I know. Later, I'll ask Nicole to make her favorite tomato omelette. Lu Feng started to tempt Ellie with food again. Tell me. What do you need my help with? Agriculture or internal affairs? Business, okay? He immediately gave her a more difficult task. Don't look down on me. I used to help my father often. Helping father handle that business. Ha, huh, beast men do business too. Something like that. Ha. Huh. Young master. About the buy limit order. That was our statement before going to Beifong City. What's wrong? No, I just think that this time there are a lot of merchants from other regions following us back. Low in, high out. This is the nature of merchants. If we sell cheaply in the market, we will attract many merchants. So that our goods will not pile up and not be able to be sold. As he spoke, he described the scene of people eagerly entering Xi'an City. But if so, the daily spending of the people in the city will be affected. The image of greedy merchants taking every item away. Leaving the people poor and hungry. Although the purchase limit now ensures that our people have enough goods, it also controls our attraction to outside merchants. The sight of the quota blocking the city gates drives the merchants away. If there are no merchants coming to the Western Ocean City, we will quickly be out of supply. Developing at such a time will not be beneficial to us. She thought carefully. Indeed, although Ellie's fighting ability is not as good as these guys. But, in terms of internal affairs, her talent far surpasses others. It seems that Lu Feng is giving her a problem to understand Ellie better. But the children of ordinary merchants will not come into contact with things of this level, right? So if you were me, what would you do? Lu Feng asked again to see what she thought. If it were me, I wouldn't be able to cancel the buy limit order for now. But we can. Before Ellie could say what her plan was, a call came from outside the door. Let us meet the Lord, we want to negotiate a big business deal with the Lord. Young master, there is a merchant outside shouting to see you. Nicole ran in to report the situation to Lu Feng. Those merchants were born in the year of the dog, and they came as soon as they were mentioned. Ellie didn't think they were that cute. No, they were clearly born in the year of Chow Chow. True Ko, what is that? Young master, now is not the time to talk about food. Some people are bright-eyed, others are worried. Don't be in a hurry, everything is under my control. Tell the merchants that the Tu Shao Lu opens tomorrow. I will go to the Tu Shao Lu. We will talk about the big market then. The opening of the drunken tower? Could it be the most delicious drunken tower in the world that the city lord mentioned? Then I must go and see. Maybe I can get close to the city lord. On the notice board of the opening of the drunken tower, the people were excitedly talking again. I heard that tomorrow the city lord is discussing with the merchants at the drunken tower. Some of the big merchants have already received the invitations. The merchants who didn't receive them are all at the city lord's mansion bidding for the leftover invitations. It seems that the bidding has reached 5 silver coins. 5.5 silver coins, the price makes everyone startled. Oh my god, if I change it to dumplings, I still won't be able to finish it in years. People here probably spend all their money on food. I heard that those who can attend the banquet can get the right to deliver goods to the western city. I wonder who is so lucky. This father had come from afar to listen to the news from afar. He almost missed such a good talk. Excuse me, is this sorrow from the past? It's me, oh. He seemed quite surprised to be approached by a girl. I am the Western City's interior minister Nicole. She smiled warmly as if welcoming him. The young master invited me to the drunken palace for a party tomorrow. Here is your invitation. She said and handed over a red invitation. Oh, okay, thanks. This came as quite a surprise to him. Everyone turned to look at him. Invitation, 555, 6 silver coins, whoever took it was stunned. Tomorrow, remember to attend on time. After she finished her work, she turned around and walked away, and everyone took the opportunity to show their love for her. Miss Nicole, it is my honor. He bowed his head in respect. In the western city's drunken tower, the tower was no different from a brothel. This was too luxurious. Everyone who entered was amazed by the sparkling beauty inside Tai Tu Lao. 
Their faces were as if they were seeing it for the first time in their lives. Before them was a row of trays of food with attractive colors and fragrant aromas. It looked no different from a buffet. Even Dees had to wipe his saliva. His eyes were sparkling with anticipation. She could choose whatever she wanted to eat. Meat, I wanted it all. Her mind was filled with meat and meat. Just mentioning meat made her eyes sparkle. Her mouth kept saying meat, meat, like a glutton. After a while of struggling, Dees finally brought back a huge bowl of meat. Her happy laugh made the angel in white surprised. Why can't I eat as much as a beast man? She sighed as she looked at the plate of food in front of her. This dish looked delicious. Just smelling it, it smells delicious. How is this dish made? Even the nobles couldn't escape the dishes before their eyes. All of them had shining eyes. The real country food and delicacies are all hidden in the city lord's mansion. The unfilial son had just appeared. He sneered at the crowd. Guests with invitations. Please follow me to the room on the second floor. A receptionist came to inform everyone. Yes yes, the last two men took their eyes off the food and moved on. Then she took them to the second floor and opened the door. Before their eyes appeared a large, magnificent room, with a round table placed in the middle of the room that made everyone amazed. Please wait a moment. The city lord will be here soon. All the crockery, glitter, and luxury. Everyone must be captivated. This utensil, this wine glass, is too delicate. The man in purple immediately ran over to touch it. Why is the upholstery of this chair so shiny? It feels good to touch. The old man quickly went over to touch it. After a moment of surprise, the door closed. Everyone sat at the table, silent. Everyone sat with their chins on their hands, looking at each other. The old man signaled to the man in purple. Everyone, I know that everyone's purpose in coming here today is different. Some are here to deliver the goods according to the rumor. Some have business to discuss. But most of them are here to ask the city lord to remove the purchase limit, right? He seemed to speak for everyone's main purpose. Making these two people stare at each other without moving. Not knowing what to say. No mistake. Otherwise, why come here? They began to talk excitedly. Turning to each other, whispering to each other. If so, I have a plan. I wonder if anyone would like to join. I'll give you a hint. Tell me. Everyone is curious about his plans. Later, wait for the city lord to come. No matter what he asks for, as long as the purchase limits are not removed, we will not agree. Everyone leaned in close to him. Was that okay? He was a noble. Going up against a noble would never end well. Another person raised his voice. Another distraction. Yes, yes. It's business. I don't want to pay with my life. He timidly raised his voice. What are you afraid of? The man in purple snapped. All conversations are recorded in a tube under the tree. A nobleman wants to develop his city. He can't ignore us merchants. The words echoed from the end of the tube down the hallway. Then dragged down to Lu Feng's room. So this is a remote control speaker. So modern. Just tie it into a rope. There's nothing to be afraid of. That's right. Okay. No matter what the city lord says later. As long as the buy limit order is not removed, we are not in agreement. Yes. Yes. All the words that wanted to oppose Lu Feng were heard by him. Can this thing hear from another room? Of course. Have I ever failed to do what I said? The two girls were curious about Lu Feng's idea. He pointed to the map he designed above. Actually, sound is a kind of wave. As long as this kind of wave can be collected, eavesdropping will become extremely simple. It seems that in the other world, he is a person who is very good at physics. Waves. Big waves. Intense. The girls were becoming confused about this knowledge. Like 12th graders who were deeply depressed about waves. Ellie. Later, she found someone who could use this intelligence system. Later. This is the ear of our western city. Remember to choose someone trustworthy. Worthy of trust. Also. Preferably with a good memory. Roughly around four to five people. Ellie. He said as he turned to Ellie who was enthusiastically taking notes. Got it. It seemed like his talkativeness was making her angry. Nicole slammed her hand on the table. Her body trembled. She suddenly shouted. Too much. The young master was clearly such a good person. They actually colluded with each other to deal with the young master. It turned out that she was feeling wrong for Lufong. 
he quickly raised his finger to stop her. Shu. Speak softly. They can hear too. Sorry, young master. Mainly, they are really too much. Only then did he smile at her words. It's okay, it's okay. Let them be proud first. After all, it's in front of us. They have no right to refuse. Nicole started to be attracted to him again. The young master is so handsome. So cool. After calming her anger, he and Ellie turned and walked away. Go. Ellie. Crush them. Lufone walked with fierce and determined steps. His eyes were full of confidence. As if he could eat them alive. Leave it to me. Ellie is just as combative. Lufong walked to the door and opened it. His outstanding demeanor and style made the group of merchants quickly change their minds. Smile. Talk, welcome. Lord. No need to be so polite. Everyone sit down. Go sit down. He gestured for everyone to sit down. I invited you all here today. Mainly for two reasons. One is the opening of my drunken Shaolu. I would like to invite you with extensive knowledge to come and evaluate my food. Ellie. She clapped her hands a few times. The waiter started serving the food. Roast pork, grilled chicken, sauce. All the delicacies were brought out. Making everyone stunned again. Here it is. Everyone is drooling. Lord of the city. Dear guests, please enjoy. Everyone, please try it. Lu Feng chuckled and raised his hand to invite everyone. He took a bite first. The taste is not good. It is not as good as Nicole's cooking. I wonder if it can impress the merchants. I am worried that the food is not delicious and will not attract the merchants. But who would have thought that this thought would be superfluous? Mine, all mine. He had eaten several chicken legs. So delicious, so delicious. Even better than the food in the royal capital. Let those useless chefs in the royal capital come and see. See if they dare to be arrogant anymore. Stop talking. I have to come here to eat every day. The merchants were grabbing each other and devouring it. Okay, I was just thinking too much. Ellie told someone to bring the stuff up. Use your hands, it's not hygienic. Okay, young master. These two ringleaders cooperate enthusiastically when it comes to plotting. But when it comes to food, they fight over it. The purple-clothed man laughed happily. City Lord. We have eaten the delicious food at Drunken Palace. I dare say that in this kingdom there is no small restaurant that can make better food than Tai Tu Lao. He happily and hurriedly flattered Lu Feng. However, the master had just said two things. He didn't know what the second thing was. Once they arrived, they quickly continued asking questions. Of course it's the limit by order that you guys are interested in. Lu Feng immediately poked their sore spot. City Lord. The purple-clothed man immediately raised his hand. His happiness was doubled. But the person in charge of the big market is not me. It is my secretary. It's Miss Ellie standing next to me. If anyone has any comments, just tell her. As he spoke, he introduced Ellie to everyone. Beast man. Handing over the business to a beast man. What does Lu Feng City Lord mean? The merchants started complaining. Looking down on Ellie. Bang. She slammed her hand down on the table in anger. What? Disdain me. Do you believe that I will permanently not remove the buy limit order? No, 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 Miss Ellie, we beg you to remove the buy limit order. Their faces immediately changed and they tucked their tails in. They didn't dare to touch her anymore. Why? Ellie asked the crowd why they wanted to remove the buy limit order. Because our purchasing power is much stronger than the common people. We buy a lot. The city lord naturally earns a lot. The ancients said it right. Everyone making money together is the right thing to do right? The purple-clothed man began to explain his thoughts. Well said. That's right. The people around him also joined in. It's right that everyone earns together. But why do I feel like you guys are treating our young master like trash? Ellie snapped at them. Miss Ellie, this is what you said. The merchants heard that and fell silent. Trading in the big market. It is a kind of benefit that my young master creates for the people. That is why the price is so low. Lu Feng smiled lightly. But you guys raised the price. You ruined the market. It's already good enough that the young master didn't order your arrest. But you guys still want us to lift the restriction order. She shouted at the guy, making them confused. Miss Ellie, don't be so serious. 
We just want to cooperate with Lu Feng City Lord. Do you think that's right? Cooperation? My young master likes cooperation. But he doesn't want to cooperate with small traders. Small traders have small businesses. They have bad eyesight. Cooperation is just a waste of time and effort. She stared at the purple-clothed man and said. Miss Ellie is right. Don't worry. The people sitting here are not merchants. That's right, Miss Ellie. I spent ten silver coins to buy the invitation from City Lord Lu Feng. How can a merchant withdraw ten silver coins? They were pleased. Is that so? But I still feel you are very poor. She sighed sarcastically at them. Ellie! What do you mean, miss? The purple-clothed man darkened. Don't misunderstand. I'm not aiming at you. I mean every guest sitting here. Compared to the young master, I'm a small business. The kind that is very small, very small. The more she provoked them, the angrier they became. These guys gradually distorted their faces. They gritted their teeth. Even the disobedient son who fled from his father to this country must tremble. So did he. Everyone was shocked by Ellie's words. Everyone was shocked and worried. At the Yukam mountain range. Snow covers the mountains. Below the mountain is an autumn forest. With flocks of birds flying extremely majestically. The army that was taking Via home was almost there. There were many threats along the way that made Via cry. There were bears threatening to eat her. But Mina also hit her head with a weapon to protect her. The poisonous snake was also threatened by her with a knife. Thinking back on what had happened, she felt like she was useless. Just thinking about this, her stomach started growling. It seemed like this child was hungry. Via, let's rest for a while and have something to eat before going. Mina was worried about her. Via shyly waved her hand and shook her head. No need, no need. I can still go. She thought to herself. Can't cause more trouble for everyone. She was acting so decisively but her stomach kept growling. Mina burst out laughing at her cuteness. I'm sorry. I'll have something to eat. To avoid causing more embarrassment to everyone, she agreed to go eat. Then everyone stopped to rest at the bottom of the cliff. Each person had a handful of rice. While eating, they enjoyed the scenery. Mina gave her two small pieces of cake. Eat this. It's delicious with fish. What is this? Via tilted her head and picked it up curiously. The young master called it biscuit. A little bit will fill you up. But it has no taste. It will be a little more delicious with fish. Like this. She placed the fish with the biscuit and instructed Via to eat it. The top young master. There are so many magical things. Via was surprised by Lu Feng's talent. Of course. Young master. Mina also took the opportunity to show off the young master with a proud expression. Via bowed her head and smiled slightly. Her face looked thoughtfully at the piece of fish placed on the cake. Mina, can I ask you a question? Go ahead. She felt. The young master would marry a female beast man. Via's question made Mina startled and unable to eat. She spat out water. Oh my. Via was confused again. Cough cough cough. What are you talking about? Mina, who was too shy to sleep, interrupted her. Sorry, sorry. It was just yesterday when I left the gate. I saw you with the young master, so I thought that. She wanted to continue but stopped. We'll get married. Mina's words made Via's eyes widen. What? She looked at Mina and asked again as if she couldn't believe her eyes. I said. Mina immediately told her. The young master will marry a female beast man. Mina said with a victorious look. Her face was smiling happily. Really? Via asked again to make sure. Although the young master was a good person. But he was still a noble. A human noble marrying a beast man. Would be laughed at by others. Via's face fell, worried about her comrade. I used to think so too. That's why I was sad for a while. But then the young master told me. What about a beast man? He wants to marry a beast man. Mina immediately thought back to what Lu Feng had said to her before. She immediately felt happy. At that time, I thought the young master was just talking. I didn't take it seriously. As a result, up until now, the young master has fulfilled all his promises. It wasn't just empty talk. Even if it is a bandit riding a horse, the prosperity of the Western Ocean City. The same goes for accepting beastmen. In the eyes of others, it is impossible. 
but the young master has done it all. So I believe the young master will definitely marry. As she spoke, she presented evidence. Proving that her words would be true. Via looked at her with admiration. The soldier behind him blushed when he heard that. Mina's face suddenly turned red. What am I saying? It seemed like she was so absorbed in her answer that she forgot about herself. If there was a hole, she would dig it deep and crawl into it. It's okay, it's okay. It's just the two of us here. I won't say anything to anyone. Via guaranteed her reputation to her. Captain, have we been forgotten? Just show your face. What else do you want to do? Shut up and eat your food. Why am I eating so fast? The three soldiers sat quietly behind, eating their mouths full of dog food. They were emotional as they ate. At the drunken palace, the villains are still disturbing the peace, Miss Ellie. What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm just telling the truth to the guests. She crossed her arms and provoking them. I know, the men here, at least have more than 30 gold coins on them. As she spoke, she approached them. They also have five, six concubines. They eat meat and fish every day. But do you guys know how much this plate of green cabbage costs? She pointed at the plate of green cabbage on the table and asked them. Mm, how much is a plate of green cabbage worth? The old man asked, picking his nose. This plate of vegetables, each leaf is the softest leaf selected from dozens of plants. The value is 65 dong. The price was so exorbitant that the old man couldn't even pick his nose and put it in his mouth. Everyone was shocked. Ha! Huh? They couldn't believe their eyes. Seeing that the crowd looked stunned, she continued. That pork costs 380 dong. The fish dish in the middle costs 700 dong. And that lion head dish, all of them are the most expensive dishes in Tai Tu Lao. She pointed straight at the food table and said the price of each dish. Everyone was surprised and terrified. But they also thought to themselves, this taste is indeed worth the price. A meal costs tens of silver coins. Even though it is expensive, everyone has to admit that it is worth it. I know some of you spend 10 yuan to buy an invitation. That's a lot of money for you. But you don't know. 10 silver coins is the price for one person to eat at this table. Moreover, the young master and I eat according to this standard every day. So with your little money you want to cooperate with my young master, and you even dare to call yourself a big businessman. Stop making fun of others. The more she spoke, the more flattering she became, scaring them. Her determined gaze made them start to lower their voices. This matter, us. Lu Feng looked at her with a satisfied expression. We can move on to the next stage. Got it. The two of them used eye contact to communicate with each other. Ha ha. Lord Lu Feng. Miss Ellie. Hearing you say that, we are indeed small traders. But together, we can still bring great benefits to Xiang City. Tell me, is that right? The purple-clothed man was still stubborn. If we spread the good news about Xiang City, more merchants would come to Xiang City in the future. The ones who would benefit in the end wouldn't be her in City Lord Lu Feng? That's right. I know you and Baron Lu Feng are good people who care about the common people. But if there is no trade, it will not be good for Xiang City. They were afraid of being outdone, so they presented solid evidence to entice. Actually, I'll tell you the truth, the young master and I have a way to deal with this business. That is, we will form a trading group ourselves. Maps for other cities. I believe that way, my young master will earn more. She said the idea that made them startled. They were stunned and terrified. Lord, don't do it. If you have any conditions tomorrow, just say so. Don't form a trading group. Sir, please be gentle. Give us small traders a way to live. The surrounding people were worried about their fate. Everyone rushed forward as if they knew their crime. If we really establish a company, we won't earn a single penny. Oh no, we didn't even talk about this. Those two probably didn't expect this move. Okay. This is just my opinion. But my secretary has a better plan. Lu Feng started to show the way to the small traders. Miss Ellie. I don't know what your plan is. Just don't form a caravan. Even if you don't remove the purchase limit, we support you. They started kneeling and begging instead of being arrogant. Simple. Pay customs duty. She outlined her plan. Customs duty. What is customs duty? How do I pay it? They all have no idea what kind of tax this is. You guys buy things from Xi'an City. We don't collect taxes. But if you want to transport a quantity of goods exceeding the limit out of Xi'an City, we will have to collect customs duties. Ellie slowly explained to them. 
There were even detailed models that were easy to understand. Moreover, the more we shipped, the more we earned. The merchants' faces turned pale. After adding the customs tax, our capital wouldn't increase much. They are worried that they will be cheated. Don't worry. The customs will be calculated within a reasonable range. Our western goods are both cheap and beautiful. Even with the customs tax. You can still earn a lot. Even though Ellie said so. But the merchants still grimaced inside. But. Great. Customs duties not only raise the merchants' prices. They also prevent them from buying in bulk. They do not affect the local people. They not only ensure the spending of the local people. They also create a normal trading channel for the merchants. And finally, they can add tax revenue to the city lord's mansion. It can be said that he killed two birds with one stone. Powerful. Powerful. This father seemed to be an educated person, so he highly regarded Lu Feng. They don't agree with this plan. We'll have to form our own caravan. You don't let them think anymore. You're forcing them into a corner. No no no, we agreed. We agreed. Finally they obeyed. So just happily decide like that. Everything has been resolved peacefully. The whole hall became quieter. Lu Fon looked towards Ellie. Her body trembled as she walked out the door. She suddenly jumped up happily. Great. I did it. Did you see that, young master? You saw the merchants who were fooled by our plan. I see it. I see it. This is all Ellie's doing. He patted her head and flattered the child. Ellie blushed, afraid of remembering something. Immediately turned away in a huff. Humph. What is this? If I, Ellie, take action, there is nothing I can't do. Yes, yes. Then the three of them walked out of the drunken palace. They left with proud faces. Heads held high towards the sky. Reaching out towards the people. I am sorrow. I am a merchant from the royal capital. I have something to discuss with you. Sorrow brought his son from afar to sincerely tell Lu Feng. Won't take much of your time. It's you. That's good. I have a business deal to give you. Ha. Huh. It seems Lu Feng has known him for a long time. He's also been eyeing you for a long time, so he said that. Startled you. Then he led you along. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Then the two of them greeted each other briefly as if they had known each other before. They happily walked away to discuss work. In the southern part of Beifong City, the sound of horses' hooves was running on the road. The autumn sky was clear, deep blue, and vast. Thin clouds like veils hung across the sky. The trees were starting to change leaves, wearing a brilliant yellow color. The scene was like a lacquer painting by a talented artist. A horse-drawn carriage carrying people passed by. Wow, this carriage. It's going so fast. The voice of a boy sitting in the carriage rang out. The boy, probably around 9 or 10 years old, had orange eyes, blonde hair, and was wearing a green shirt with yellow stripes. He was sitting next to the window. In the car were Lu Feng, Ellie, and a mature man with brown hair. He was watching the boy intently. The speed was so fast. But sitting still without shaking, it was so great. The boy lifted himself up and then fell back down on the chair, testing his butt, his mouth shouting with delight. Seeing this, Ellie smiled slightly and said, showing understanding. Of course, this carriage was specially made and equipped with high-end shock absorbers. There is only one of our young masters in the world. The first time he heard about shock absorbers, the boy was excited. Shock absorbers. That is. The mature man sitting beside him continued. As expected of Lord Lufong, there are countless good things in Beifong City. He then burst out laughing. Ha 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 ha. His arm touched the boy, indicating that he should stop asking. The boy's face became grimaced and uncomfortable when he was touched. Only then did Lu Feng speak. As far as I know, Mr. Sara was a big merchant in all the kingdoms of the north and south. He must have come for these good things, right? The man was quite surprised by Lu Feng's intelligence. He put his hand on his chest, bowed his head and said, The Lord is wise. Lu Feng said again, Mr. Sara was very knowledgeable. Of course I want to cooperate. The man looked pleased. So what business do you want to talk to me about? Lu Feng did not answer the man immediately. He looked out the window. The horse was still galloping very fast. You will know in a moment. Lu Feng replied. Finally arrived. The carriage stopped in front of the southern city factory. The city lord has arrived. Someone shouted loudly. The house is so big, the boy walking with the man exclaimed. 
What big house? This is a factory. Ellie retorted to the boy. Mr. Sorrow, please come this way. Lu Feng politely waved his hand to invite the man to step into the already open passage. Okay, the man replied. As soon as he opened the door and entered, the man was overwhelmed by the large room filled with things that Lu Feng wanted to trade. Mr. Sorrow, this is the business I want to discuss with you. The man could only stand there, staring at what was happening before his eyes, amazed. The blonde boy who was with the man ran back and forth, as surprised as his father. The boy shouted. Father, come and see, there are so many fabrics here. Lu Feng turned to Ellie and asked. Ellie, how many rolls of fabric are there? Ellie was given the responsibility, took out the notebook from her sleeve and read. There are currently 400 rolls of low-grade fabric, 200 rolls of low-grade medium fabric, and 20 rolls of medium fabric in stock. Wow, that's a lot. The blonde boy exclaimed. The four of them walked inside, walking between wooden shelves that reached to the ceiling. Inside were stacked rolls of fabric of all colors. Lu Feng asked Ellie again. What is the daily output now? Low-grade fabric is 40 rolls, low-grade medium fabric is 20 rolls. Medium-grade fabric is. Before Ellie could finish speaking, the blonde-haired boy Sorrow interrupted. One meter of cloth is 30 silver coins, one roll is 30 meters long, one day can produce 60 rolls, one day's income is 50 silver coins, two days is one gold coin. Minus material fee, labor fee, packaging fee, shipping fee, bribe fee, capital. As he spoke, the boy calculated. He seemed very proficient. After calculating, the boy turned back to his father and said, My father earns a hundred gold coins a year from this business. Lu Feng happily praised the boy for his intelligence and cleverness. As expected of the son of a merchant of the kingdom. The boy was praised by the lord of Taeduong City, his eyes lit up with happiness. Only Ellie seemed annoyed with the boy's cleverness. Ha, huh, you brat. Ellie said to herself. The merchant who had been silent since entering the room finally spoke up. But Lord Lu Feng, weaving is a manual process that takes time and effort. Where does such a large output come from? He wondered. Ellie saw that Sara was asking a tactful question. She answered bluntly. This is our western city's secret. How can we tell you guys? Seeing the girl look nervous, Lu Feng smiled and replied, It's okay to look a little. After saying that, Lu Feng glanced at Ellie. It seemed like he had angered her again. Lu Feng walked ahead and led the way. Ellie followed behind with an angry expression. The merchant's sorrow and his son followed them. While walking on the street, the blonde merchant's son suddenly naughtily tugged on Ellie's shirt. The girl turned back thinking something was wrong. But no, the boy teased Ellie again. He made a scene. He raised his hand and pulled his eyes down. His mouth opened wide and he grinned. He grinned. Ellie was already annoyed, but being tricked by this brat made her even angrier. The girl frowned and shouted. Perhaps because the boy was the son of a merchant from the kingdom and was coming to discuss business with the western city. There was no way to ruin the cooperation between the two sides. So Ellie could only keep quiet. Lu Feng led them to a house. Stepping inside, the merchant stopped dead in his tracks before a strange object. He hesitated. Here. Here. Now, Ellie thought, was the time to introduce herself. She spoke up. Ha ha. You don't know, right? This is the thing. Ellie was introducing something to Sorrow that made him curious. Before she could finish, Sorrow's son interrupted. The thing used to weave cloth, right? Ellie was disappointed. While she was in a fit of anger, the boy ran towards the machine and quickly asked. How do you use this thing? Ellie was so angry that she couldn't do anything, thinking to herself. This brat. Suddenly, Lu Fong spoke to Ellie. Ellie, perform for them. No big deal. Ellie replied. Ellie walked up to the machine. She lifted the blonde boy who was there up with one hand and said coldly. Over there. Looks like it's time for Ellie to show off. Ellie sat down in the chair, placing her hands on the device. She thought to herself. Look at me. Then Ellie suddenly sped up, her hands moving quickly on the loom, making the shuttles move back and forth very quickly. Clack, clack, clack. In a flash. A pure white cloth was woven. Ellie held the cloth in her hand. Her mouth was full of pride. Done. Easy. No big deal. She held the cloth out to the merchant Sorrow and asked. How is it? Before Sorrow could reply, his son spoke up. Sister Ellie is so good. The boy looked at Ellie with admiration. Since he arrived, the mischievous boy had annoyed Ellie many times. This time he praised Ellie. 
She was quite surprised by the boy's attitude. A little stunned. The girl turned her face away to hide her emotions. She said as if she didn't care. Humph. This trivial matter. But Ellie's anger had long since subsided. This kid isn't that hateful. Ellie thought to herself. Lufong City Lord asked again. Ellie, when can the production capacity of some lower grades be raised to 100 rolls? Training for the new recruits has already begun. Once they start production, output will be a piece of the puzzle. Ellie replied confidently. The man often went along and heard with his own ears and witnessed with his own eyes what the Lord of Taeduong City had done and was doing, and he was filled with admiration. He thought to himself. Who exactly was this lord? Lu Feng asked the man. Mr. Sorrow. What do you think of the fabric made from these weaving machines? Holding the cloth in his hands, the man spoke his feelings. Very delicate, very soft, absolutely top quality, the kind of fabric that noble merchants would wear. Ellie laughed happily when she heard Sorrow's comment. She spoke up to explain. Mr. Sorrow, the fabric that the young master makes has six grades. Superior, super superior, superior, medium, low mid, low. These are just the low grade fabrics. There are also low mid fabrics that the people in the city usually wear. So this is the reason why Ellie laughed like that. Mr. Sara was very surprised when he heard this. This is just low grade fabric. Then middle grade, high grade, high high grade. He trailed off, probably finding it hard to imagine. His hand caressed the low grade fabric, and he continued hesitantly. Not to mention nobles, even kings would like it. At this time, Lu Feng asked again. Then let me do it. You suggest. I have the product, you have the sales system. I think you know very well whether my product is worth it or not. Hearing Lu Feng's offer, the man calculated in his mind. This was not just 100 gold coins, this was a business worth at least 1000 gold coins a year. The man didn't need to think long before the lucrative offer. He replied to Lu Feng. Lord City Lord, Sorrow sincerely cooperates. To show his sincerity, in terms of profit, I only need 1%. Merchant Sorrow raised his fist to his chest to show his commitment. Lord City Lord, please believe in the strength of our merchant team. As for Lu Feng, after hearing the Merchant Sorrow's determination to only accept 1% profit and to commit to sincere cooperation, he thought. He thought he would want 3% profit, but this Sorrow was even more determined than he had imagined. While no one spoke, the merchant's son suddenly shouted, I've decided. Brother Lu Feng, from now on you will be my brother-in-law, the boy said, pointing at Lu Feng, his eyes very determined, certain, not seeming to be joking. After the boy's words, there was a funny scene. Lu Feng and Ellie were completely surprised, their faces blank with confusion. The boy's father, Mr. Sorrow, felt sorry for him and quickly ran to his son to comfort him. Gull, don't talk nonsense. He turned to Lu Feng and explained. But I do have a daughter, both literary and martial, intelligent and resourceful, the kind of girl everyone desires. The city lord likes talented women like that. If you, before the man could finish his sentence, the boy asked again. Brother-in-law, is there anything fun to do at your place? Take me to see. The innocent nature of the merchant's son accidentally angered Ellie, causing her to yell. Don't call him brother-in-law. This brat is truly the most hateful kid in the world. The sky was gray, Mina, Via and the wolf army rode their horses deeper and deeper into the forest. Coming to a rather narrow road, Mina spoke up. This road is too narrow, we have to walk. Mina quickly weaved through the trees, the wolf squad followed. Via looked tired. After walking a short distance, Via was panting. Mina saw this and asked Via. Are you okay? Why don't you rest for a while? Via raised her hand to rub her eyes, answering, her voice broken. No need, ahead, ahead is the tribe's territory. Mina said to the wolf warriors. Okay, you guys escort here, Via and I will go first. Suddenly seeing the human race, the beast tribe could not help but panic. The men escorting him obeyed. Yes. Via stopped and looked at Mina with gratitude. Thank you, Mina. Mina turned back to look at Via and smiled. She said. Let's go. Um. Via replied. Two girls walking in the forest. The sound of falling leaves rustling. Peel, peel. Suddenly Mina sensed something unusual. She pulled Via back. Shoo! Mina whispered. They stopped to listen. Mina pulled out her knife. She smelled something strange around here. Swish! Mina pushed aside the bushes beside the road to look. Sure enough, in the bushes was a little girl trembling in fear. She had blue hair and blue eyes. 
She was wearing a long cloak, revealing only her face and hair. Suddenly Via recognized someone she knew. She exclaimed. Sumi. Why are you here? Mina turned to look at Via. A little surprised, it turned out that the two of them knew each other. The little girl saw Via and quickly said, Sister Via, then she ran over and hugged Via. The two sisters hugged each other and burst into tears. It was Sister Via. Via gently reached up to brush the blue hair aside, wiping away the little girl's tears. She said. Sumi. You're hurt. What happened? Little Sumi rubbed her eyes. Sobbing as she spoke. There were bad beast men attacking the tribe. Only I managed to escape. Via hugged her and comforted her. Mina stood there. Hearing the beastmen being attacked, she was furious. She gritted her teeth. Her hands retracted. Trembling with anger. Via asked little Sumi again. Doesn't the tribe have a guardian? Where is Mary? Looking up with teary eyes, her face was dazed and dirty. Sumi said. Since we were taken away, many, many others have. Her voice choked. Because of the great misfortune that has befallen the tribe. Families separated. Loved ones separated. The girl choked on each word. Leave us and go. Try to avoid saying this and then burst into tears. This. Vaya spoke up. But she didn't know what to say. She could only hold her little sister tightly in her arms. Her heart was filled with sorrow. Suddenly Nina's hand was on Vaya's shoulder. Nina said. Now is not the time to be sad. Via and her little beast sister Sumi looked up at Nina. She quickened her pace. Let's go. Save the people. Nina stepped forward. Her eyes reflected the hatred. She was determined to avenge her tribe. The sound of rustling leaves in the night continued. In the place where the beastmen tribe lived, the beastmen traffickers were rampant. They tied up the beastmen, beat them, and tortured them. The commander said. This time, it was really a big harvest. I thought it was just luck. I didn't expect to discover a nest of beastmen. He said and then let out an arrogant laugh. That's right. Moreover, they are all white and tender little beastmen. If we sell them to those perverted nobles now, we will make a fortune. Ha ha. The underlings joined in. They laughed loudly under the cold night sky. The four beastmen grandmother and granddaughter were hugging each other, shivering in fear in the tent. Slap. A blue-haired, rabbit-eared beastman was just hit by the commander. He slapped him across the face, causing him to fall down in pain. He was a big-boned beastman trader. Big. He asked his underling. Have you caught that little rabbit yet? They've sent people to look for it. Still no news. The underling replied. Damn it. That rabbit looks cute. It's worth the money. The big commander said. He meant Sumi. The rabbit girl with blue hair and pretty blue eyes. He was so angry. Because he lost the little rabbit girl. He was furious. He couldn't vent his anger anywhere. He took it out on the beast man who was trembling on the ground. The one he had just beaten. He pulled his leg back and kicked the beast man with great force. It hit him straight on the chin. Causing him to fall backwards. Blood was flowing from his mouth. He shouted. Tell me. After all. Where did you hide it? The beast man, even if beaten and interrogated, would definitely not tell. The beast girl shivered inside the tent and sobbed. Tell the beast grandma. Grandma, grandma. Please save Sumi, everyone else is gone and only they are here to take care of us. The little girls cried and begged. But the grandmother just silently shook her head helplessly. Outside, the commander grabbed the blue-haired beast man by the ear and lifted him up. He spoke with a hypocritical tone. The Frost Queen's anger is raging so fiercely. You guys staying here will only be waiting to die. It's better to go to the noble's side. If you don't think about yourself, then at least think about the children. His words seemed to be concerned and reeked of hypocrisy. The beast man looked at him with eyes filled with extreme resentment. He gritted his teeth. A mouthful of saliva mixed with blood sprayed onto his face. Too surprised, he yelled furiously. This bastard, he pulled out a knife from his belt. He really wanted to die. The blade was almost at the beastman's neck. Suddenly a stream of blood spurted out. Not from the beastman's neck, but from the commander himself. He collapsed. Mina appeared behind. Mina's sharp blade helped him end his sinful life. The underlings raised their heads in surprise. Swords in hand. 
The children in the tent suddenly shouted. Grandma Mary, is someone coming to save us? Grandma Mary was toothless and did not answer. The robbers were shocked. Where did she come from? The boss was killed. They all shouted in unison. Kill her. They charged at once. Mina was on the defensive. Suddenly a loud noise was heard. Mina threw rocks at the thugs. As quick as lightning, the blade slashed at their necks one by one. She disappeared. That was all they had time to say. In the blink of an eye, those thugs were almost all killed by her. Suddenly there was a cry. Help! Help! Please! Save me! A hooded man was lying on the ground shouting. Above him was a thug holding a knife, ready to strike down. Mina thought the person calling for help was a beast man. She quickly jumped one step. Rushed towards that hooligan. Kicked him. He fell backwards. She turned back to ask the beast man. Are you okay? Can you stand up? The cloaked man smiled sinisterly. He pretended to be a beast man and called for help to draw Mina closer. Suddenly he opened his hand. Throw tiny objects at Mina's face. She fell for it. Mina cried out in pain. The tiny objects were hitting her, making it impossible for her to open her eyes. Tears welled up. Falling down in streams. My eyes. The traffickers took the opportunity and rushed forward. They said to each other. Take the opportunity. Grab her. Mina couldn't see clearly. The robber appeared in front of her eyes in a blur. Suddenly she heard a voice. Beast Man Warrior. Based on the eyes of the stars. There was this saying. Mina seemed to wake up. She knew what she had to do. No mistake. She closed her eyes. The thugs were just waiting for this. He shouted. Eyes closed. Are you ready to die? Ha ha. He lunged. Slashed the sword at Mina. But it seemed he was still too slow. One knife stabbed the arm. One knife stabbed the stomach. Mina's attack was precise. Han died within inches. The rest stood there, stunned. Eyes still closed. Mobilize the remaining senses. Mina told herself. Don't rely on your eyes to grasp the opponent's movements. Use the remaining senses. Think and act. The blade glides like the wind. One by one, Mina took them down. Mina paused. She was still thinking. She was also calm. She wondered. Who was the one who spoke just now? She looked up. Someone was standing high above. The red cloak fluttered in the wind. A female warrior with platinum hair and eyes. A wolfkin beast knight. One foot jumped high. What kind of beast is this that can jump so high? It has a horn on its head. Its ears are like a white fox's. But its skin is brown. Mina looked up in surprise. Before I could recover from the shock, she descended. It was like a nuclear bomb had just dropped. It affected everyone around. Everyone was thrown far away. She slashed her long sword high into the sky. Her bloodshot eyes were sharp like an assassin. She was rampaging here. Her eyes turned to each person one by one. Bright red dyed her eyes. She then used another move. What kind of beast could be so powerful? She just swung her sword once. It sent everyone flying everywhere. It was the knight of the beast kingdom. Via recognized who she was. She never expected to meet him. That's right. The economy of the beast kingdom is backward. Resources are scarce. It has to rely on smuggling metals from humans to create a branch of beast knights. Mina seemed to have just solved something quite important. The most famous of which was the wolfkin beast knight. The knight was still rampaging, killing people one by one. With just one swing of his sword, he could kill three or four people at once. Each one of them could single-handedly take on several knights from the human kingdom. The knights showed no signs of stopping. They continued to charge forward with their swords drawn. Their eyes emitted murderous intent. But I heard that the female beast knights of the wolf clan all protect the royal family's princesses. Why are they here? Via asked Mina curiously. Before the two girls could finish their questions, a guy fell down in front of them. They looked forward in amazement. Via still held the blue-haired girl tightly in her arms. Before the two of them was the wolf beast knight Avery. In just a moment, she had returned to her original appearance. The noble and strong appearance of a knight. Mina was also surprised. So strong, making Mina surprised like this. 
The knight must have incredible strength. After calming down the crowd outside, the knight turned and ran straight towards the stone hut. Your majesty, Avery is here, his footsteps running as fast as the neighing of a horse. The knight rushed forward and opened the door. She was surprised to see that inside were young beastmen and an old beastman. Everyone was shivering and hugging each other tightly. No, no, it seemed like the person she was looking for was not here. Her face suddenly became tense and empty, princess, where the hell are you? The eyes that were full of murderous intent just now were now filled with tears. Mrs. Mary, are you okay? The beastmen locked inside heard Vaya's voice and stood up. Their sparkling eyes turned towards the door. The corners of their mouths that were still pouting were now smiling like sunflowers. It was Vaya. It was Vaya's voice. Everyone was getting excited because they knew they were about to be free. Grandma, Grandma, is it Vaya back? A little boy came over and hugged her tightly. His innocent eyes looked up and asked her. Vaya. Could it be? Could it be that someone from the clan has returned? After rescuing Vaya, the old woman suddenly woke up. Her face was filled with tears of emotion, unable to believe her eyes. Then Vaya appeared in the doorway, calling out loudly. Mrs. Mary, she called her name with joy and hope. At first it was just Mrs. Mary. But then she stopped when she saw the children. Via, the old woman asked her with a trembling voice. Her kind and benevolent eyes seemed to have been waiting for her for a long time. Sister Via, it's you. Everyone is okay. Great. Everyone ran to hug each other. Happy and joyful. Never before had the meetings of the beastmen been so warm. They were all worried about each other. So when they met again, they all thought it was a miracle. Via, it's great. Everyone left us. I don't care about my old age. I just feel sorry for these kids. Mary shared the pain she had gone through. Although she was not in good health, she was a good person. She couldn't bear to leave the kids alone. Via also sympathized with her. The children were moved to hear it. Each of them burst into tears. Grandma. Looking at the children beside her, Via also shed tears. The sympathy of the beastmen also came from this. Grandma Mary, don't worry. She patted her shoulder and comforted her. Via had not only returned, but had also found land to the south, a place that would allow the beastmen to settle down and make a living. We don't need to suffer anymore. Her warm words soothed the little hearts that had just been imprisoned. Everyone felt like they had just been reunited with their homeland. The knight looked at their reunion with a bit of envy. Just like that, she sighed, put away her sword, turned around and walked away. In the dark night covered with snow, the knight walked alone in the cold loneliness. It's delicious. Take it. Mina tossed him a small bag. Not a step off, not a millimeter off. The bag was in her hands without a single miss. Um, why can you be so strong? Mina wants to ask the secret to being so strong. But he was quite cold and silent for a while, making Mina not know what to say. Because I have a reason why I cannot lose. The knight replied coldly. He exuded the essence of chivalry. A responsible person. This figure reminded Mina of Lu Feng. It was the same sentence Lu Feng once said to her. The reason I can't lose. Lu Feng looked straight into her eyes and said, making her heart beat faster. A new day has begun. People are starting to work under the 30 degree heat. Another harvest season has come. Everyone is hunting in the fields. Lu Feng just woke up and stretched to welcome the new day. His face showed a sense of comfort and freedom. The landlord's house was truly leisurely with no shortage of food. Lu Feng said with relief. His face was satisfied. His happy laughter made Ellie look at him. But when he turned around she ran away. It seemed he sensed someone behind him but then ignored it. Must strengthen the defense on the other side. 25 new recruits have deserted. Yes, Lu Feng ordered Niu Ben to deal with the deserters severely. While talking, he realized something. The little yellow hand hid in the corner of the wall. After returning home to eat, Ellie ate ravenously. Meanwhile, Lu Fong was asking questions. Nicole, are the preparations for the pizza shop going well? He asked about the status of the pizza shop that was about to open. Almost done, wait for Mina and Vaya to come back and we can start the chapter. Nicole excitedly told him. Ellie stopped eating suddenly. She stared at the two of them. Saw Lu Fong turn his head towards her. She touched the back of her neck like an ant and jumped. Her ears stood up. I, I'm full. She immediately found an excuse to walk away. Ellie's confusion left Lu Feng and Nicole helpless, not understanding what was happening. 
Ellie, who was just trying to run away, was now lurking outside Lu Fong's room door. She stood outside for a while before stepping inside. Hmm, where is the young master? Seeing the empty room, she wondered. What are you looking for me for? Lu Fong appeared from behind her, causing her to startle and scream. Ha! Huh? Who's looking for you? Me, me, me. You, you, you. She ran to the opposite side and leaned against the wall. Her mouth stuttered and she couldn't form any words. Tell me. Is there any problem? Lu Feng seemed to have read her mind. It's just trivial matters. You don't need to think of a way to help. Her mouth denied it. But her hand shook the dirty paper in front of Lu Feng's face. Let me see. Lu Feng took the paper. Oh, it's news from the drunken palace. Smuggling, running away, this is the information Ellie heard through the homemade wiretap. Also want to take advantage of people selling goods abroad to avoid taxes. Taking advantage of such loopholes is really hateful. But me, me. Ellie was angry on behalf of Lu Fong. She wanted to scratch and bite them to pieces. She felt angry on behalf of Lu Fong. Looking at her adorable actions, Lu Fong sighed and chuckled. Ellie's eyes suddenly fell. She muttered to herself. But I didn't know what to do. She was confused and guilty for not being able to solve the problem for Lu Fong. Lu Fong saw this and laughed out loud. His laughter made Ellie stunned. To deal with these greedy merchants, I had been prepared for a long time. Lord, the guards you need have been selected. And Mr. Ryan has been invited. Nyo Ben reported the good news to Lu Fong. Very good. Things are gradually going in Lu Feng's direction. Come on, Ellie. He said then turned and called Ellie to follow him, to go see the security station that I had just set up. He walked heroically, boldly leading Ellie to see his plan, the preparations that he had made in advance. It was pouring rain, big drops of rain pouring down at the guard station. My lord, let's take this opportunity to run away. I don't know why Lord Lu Feng let us go. I heard that Baron Homa was also captured by that person. The two men who were released immediately had bad intentions right in front of the guard gate. If he didn't go now, he wouldn't have another chance. Furthermore, Miss Liga was waiting in Lima City. The disciple repeatedly proposed plans to escape with his master. Mr. Ryan, please follow me. The beast man guard standing at the door enthusiastically invited the two of them to come out. Suddenly, from somewhere appeared muscular guys, but their faces were quite shiny. The two of them were brought to a room full of big, burly men, no different from gangsters. They looked at the two people standing at the door and sneered. My lord, they were so strong. Suddenly I felt so weak. I couldn't help. The disciple acted weak and scared in front of these guys. He made his master pale. Then they slowly walked through that room. Sir, look at that badge. It must be made of forged steel. It must be worth a few silver coins. The assistant looked at the shiny security department badge with a rather panicked expression. Their equipment is so sophisticated. I'm afraid even the Knights of Lima City can't compare. How amazing. What the hell is this guard station? Even the blonde-haired lord was surprised by how modern it was. At the deputy director's office, the beastman guard had already brought the two people to the door. Mr. Ryan, your armor and badge are in the office. The two people did not understand what the beastman said. Sir, he said you, you have armor and badge. The assistant looked at him nervously. Office, does Baron Lu Feng want me to go to the security department? That's right. Lu Feng walked over from afar to answer the two. They suddenly turned around. I want you to be the deputy director of the security department. Lu Feng gave his opinion. Greetings, Lord. The beastman guard stood at attention and greeted him with excitement. This one I, Ryan is still quite confused. Not understanding why I was chosen. Ryan, I know you used to be a knight. Then you were demoted to a civil servant. You have always been undervalued. Lu Feng seems to have studied Ryan for a long time. That's why he gave you such a high position. That's right. Sir Ryan's fate is so miserable. He is clearly talented but has not met his time. He is also being oppressed by that Baron Homa. The assistant laments his lord's suffering. Tears flowed like a stream. Even the girl he loved the most, Liga, was implicated. While crying, he poured out all about Ryan's unfair life. Now I'll give you a chance. The equipment of the guard station is very sophisticated. All the guards are the best people selected from the army. Lu Feng said sincere and honest words to Ryan. Making him confused inside. From now on, everyone will be responsible for catching criminals. 
maintain order and security. Ensure the safety of property and lives of all the people of this western city. He raised his hand to his chest and spoke firmly. At times like this, he seemed to exude the aura of a king. Ryan, can you do it? Lu Feng looked straight at Ryan and asked again. I, you still have something undecided. But after a while he closed his eyes and gave up. He listened to his talent. I understand. Willing to devote all his strength to the city lord. Ryan knelt down respectfully to receive the order. The assistant also obediently knelt down, moved and performed a bow. Finally, the two of them looked at each other and nodded in agreement, as if this was a sign that the western city would become more and more stable. He brought me here to see what this was for. Lu Feng and Ellie returned after promoting Ryan. Each of them had an umbrella and walked in the pouring rain. The smuggling issue was still unresolved. Ellie still didn't understand why he brought her here. She said that in the future, when there is a security agency, it will be convenient for them to catch criminals who smuggle and evade taxes, right? Lu Feng laughed and replied at her naivety. Ha! Huh? Why didn't I think of that? She felt like she had just gained another piece of knowledge. But then realized I was so rustic. The sullen face turned to blame Lu Feng. That's it, I've always wanted to set up a similar guard station. That's right, that's right. Also, I think it's very suitable for Ryan to be in charge. She added to avoid embarrassment. That's right, that's right. How could you not think of it? Needless to say, I'm so good. Lu Feng flattered her to avoid trouble. The people around were running away from the rain and wind. Were soaked to the skin. What good thing could it be? The city lord is so handsome. The gossip in the neighborhood was as lively as ever. Yes, let's go home and eat. I want to eat the tomato and egg stir-fry that Nicole cooked. Okay, okay. Then the two of them chatted as they went home. Another morning begins, the sunlight shines through the golden leaves like autumn leaves. The army that went to rescue the beastmen was passing through the forest to return to Taeduong City. Vaya, will that noble take us in? But we are beastmen, Mrs. Mary was still worried whether it was okay to do so. Seeing that she was still uncertain and doubtful, Via immediately resolved her worries. Rest assured, the young master is not like other nobles. Whether human or beast, in his western city, as long as one can work, one can support oneself. But we have so many children, I'm old, only a few of you adults working, how can it be enough? She felt even more guilty, afraid that she would bring trouble to Via. Yes, so many beast children. Accommodation will be. Hearing her say that, Via also became flustered and worried. Don't worry, Mrs. Mary, I'm here. As long as we rely on each other, we'll definitely be able to live on. She continued to reassure her with her positive gaze. Yes, Mrs. Mary. I can do manual work. The blue-haired prisoner added reassuringly. Via turned to look at him. It's okay, the two of them looked at each other expressing their words through sympathetic eyes. This time as long as everyone works together, it will definitely be fine. Because they are of the same species, it is easy to share and understand each other. Everything will be easier to solve if they work together.